That's all right. This is the beginning. Nobody watches the beginning anyway. Um, <laughs> I, I think you got it confused with the I end. Think, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. People barely do watch the end because I know turkey people, hammock all yeah, the time. People. All right, you ready? Uh, no, you ready for our 84 Eve episode? Oh, 84 Eve. That's a good one. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, let's 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 talk about some fountain pens and then some in between stuff. I see you have two vessels there. What are we doing? We doing? I do. I got coffee with hot chocolate in it because I'm seven and water. Huh. For hydration, for when I finish the coffee. Well, okay. It's like you with the coffee and the tea. I like I, that. I, have I like just that. Well, water. what I do now is I just double up on the coffee. I used to do coffee and tea. Now I just do double coffee. Okay. That's that's legit too. Yeah. I've been drinking decaf because we have decaf mm-hmm. back there. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I mean, you get the coffee taste. Tastes the same. Yeah. yeah. I don't care. Mm-hmm. You don't get quite the kick in the pants. I don't need the kick the... in the pants. <laughs> kick in the pants does. I mean, by the know, fourth cup of coffee right, that no, day. Like, yeah. I, and, and I think that's an ADHD thing where caffeine affects you differently. Oh, for so sure. I'm like always riled up anyway. I don't yeah. really need caffeine you don't to, need get, more, to get yeah. jazzed up. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm that's always, fair. I'm that's always fair. on. You like the, the taste, right? Yeah. yeah, and the warmth. It's like it's cozy, and yeah. honestly, it's relaxing. Like yeah. that's why I like to have coffee at night because it just puts me at ease. Like warm beverages in general tend to do that for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not alone on that. Warm milk, warm tea, warm coffee. Oh, yeah. Anything. Yeah. Warm Gatorade. Uh, apple cider. Yeah. Love apple cider. Yeah. In the winter. Warm. Anyway. All right. Let's do it. Let's. Welcome, everybody, to episode number 83, or as we like to say, 84 Eve. Yes. Of the Goulet Pen Cast, where fountain pens are still a thing. I'm Brian Goulet. I am Drew Brown. Yeah, you are. Mm. And we're here from Goulet Pens to deliver this casual and informal, tangential and extraneous, superfluous and extemporaneous fountain pen show, where we talk about what's going on at the Goulet Pen Company and in our fountain pen lives. In today's show, we're going to be talking about Dream Franken Pens, uh, which we've talked about before, Mm -hmm. but we're going to talk about it again, because we probably forgot. Uh, We're going to be talking about tuning a pilot nib without smoothing it. We're going to be talking about affordable grail pens, whatever that means, learning to write with broader nibs, and I'm interested to get into this one because I don't understand it, Uh, why we don't have more videos on handwriting instruction specifically. We're gonna show the Pilot Custom 74, blah, blah. I just went right to Custom 74, 743. Um, And then we have a hypothetical we may throw in there or not, depends on how much we talk about other things. And of course we have our normal nonsense as we always do. Speaking of which, let's get into some feedback. Brian, I want to say something. Yeah. All of this feedback came to us from the YouTubes. Hey, the right? tubes. No Instagrams, no right. emails, 100% from the YouTubes. All right. So from you, thank you. I put up an from image. From your tubes. I put up an image of you with your Wolverine Claw pens. I couldn't have both of us in there because it only wanted a square. So I'm like, we well, be, we can be square. This mug is slightly saying more. I'm the most square of the this, two of no, us. I'm saying that, no. I'm saying this situation is slightly more marketable. I'd say, you know. Yeah, but until the until the Goulet, the Droule Pen Company, you know, takes <laughs> over and sells its toothbrushes. That's right. For now, the the time is yours. But just, all right, I'll you, take you, it. You wait. I'll man. take what I can get. So anyway, this is this you is gotta, from, you got to flaunt it. Right? This is all YouTube stuff. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, Zach Dale asks uh, or says, I'm not sure if this will further muddy the waters on the cheesecake discourse, but here goes. <laughs> Speaking as a chef, cheesecake is a baked custard. Mm. Custards are any number of desserts made from milk, cream, or cheese, or a mixture of those, thickened with eggs, egg yolk, gelatin, or cornstarch. In a lot of culinary curriculums, they are taught alongside other baked custards, such as bread pudding, mm. cream, creme brulee, and flan. It's in good company there. Yeah. Those are some delicious Yeah, so I'll take, I'll, take, I'll take Zach's. I propose Expertise. we change the name from cheesecake to cheese flan. Ooh, I'm into that. Yeah, I like that. Cheese flan. Flan's a nice, or the cheese f- cheese brulee. Cheese brulee. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds weird for some reason. Right, right, right. Cheese well, the bru- pudding. The brulee no. is the brulee is the, the fire part. You can't really have. Brulee. Yeah, yeah. You could brulee a cheesecake. You I could. Guess. I don't know how well that would go. I don't think it would Wouldn't go great. Just, no, that would just make. No, it would just. Melt make butter on top of it. Yeah, it would be weird. <laughs> okay. It's not really flan either. No. I don't know. It's its own thing. It's its own thing. Just let it be what it is. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Zach. 
All right. And uh, Solange Garnier says, this has to be my favorite episode to date. Mm. And I believe gratitude is in order. Number 82, I'm assuming. I guess so. All right. I absolutely burst out with laughter. Thankfully, no food or beverage was involved. <laughs> Hearing Brian doing voices for the different sizes of parallel pens. I vibed so hard when Drew, with Drew when he remarked uh, Brian's niece's lovely pretend guitar reminded him of Jem and the Holograms. Yes. Nice. I loved being brought back to memories of my own childhood, basking in the smell of my grandfather's workshop where he created mysteriously shaped intarsia, whatever that means, and playing with wood bits he kept in a box for me. Thank you both for providing this comforting, socially corny, weird, weirdly virtual, and yet very real warmth, patient, patience, and gentleness. It's amazing how the Fountain Pen community can bring such a feeling of kindred spirits from thousands of miles away. That is makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. That is very warming. That was delightful. Do you, are you looking up what intarsia means? No, I'm looking up the next question. I, oh, I'm I know, cheating. right? I'm looking ahead. I know, I know. Look, Google intarsia. Oh, I, I know what intarsia is. Tell me. Um, so intarsia. It's, intarsia. Intarsia. That's how I have always pronounced okay. it. Okay, no, no. That's one of those things that I think I've only ever read it. And Mysteriously I'm not sure. shaped intarsia. Intarsia, at least in my understanding of it, it's a woodworking technique. Oh. Like if you've ever seen marquetry where you take different pieces of nope. wood and you sort of like join them together like a puzzle. So it's sort of like, you've definitely seen this before. Okay. But um, I'll just pull up an image. <laughs> okay, intarsia. Um, but it's basically where you have different pieces of wood that you link together sort of like a puzzle, but it's like three dimensional of sorts. Whereas okay. mar marquetry is typically flat. Um, Oh, intarsia is a knitting technique used to create patterns with multiple colors. Oh. What? Okay, so it has multiple well, this, definitions. Well, Solange was talking about woodworking, so... So in, intarsia is a woodworking technique, but apparently it's also a knitting technique. All right, but It does well, involve different colors, so it's a similar principle. Anyway, I, um, guess. The, uh, I also learned this came from uh, Brian Kay in Customer Care, who saw it, I don't know, in Goulet Nation or someplace. But I had mentioned that if I got to pick a safari, a Lamy safari that I could, you know, choose any colors for, I would want a. This is intarsia. Oh, okay. So just multicolored wood in a. Yeah, shape. but it's like three dimensional, so it's like oh. sort of sculpted, but it's like put together kind of like a puzzle okay. of sorts. Usually like animals or something like that in the picture. Cool. Anyway, I said I would want a sort of cement gray Lamy safari, a matte gray, not glossy, and uh, just kind of a flat gray and of course it already exists, it exists. It i've was, never seen this pen neither did i i was blown away but that's exactly what i was talking about is that real yeah it was a it was a um uh it's not a deep fake no it's not it was, a it was mid-journey generated it was image. an exclusive for a retailer <laughs> somewhere in asia i don't recall but um, oh so it's like a regional okay because i've never heard a of it thing. okay a regional th okay yep. they so lami i've been to their factory they don't have like a, a pen vault where they've kept like one of everything so they literally it's like if they've made regionals and stuff it's kind of like oh well you know they're out there they're somewhere, out there somewhere, i guess yeah. but there's no like master list of everything it makes you wonder is there of. even a color that hasn't been done yet like no wonder we're seeing kind of repeats and stuff that is like oh more pastels probably because they've just done everything else yeah golly anyway i uh -huh. would still like to have one um this is a this is a very light gray though. I could see going a little darker. A little this, darker, but yeah. still, they, they, I guess that's they have a, done a matte gray. That's pretty much what I was thinking. Yeah. All right, fair enough. So there we go. You want to feed us back on some stuff? Yeah, let's do it. Let me uh, pull my notes back up here. I got uh, one from George. Jorge. Jorge. Sorry. Yeah. Jorge with a J. Uh, so I wanted to write this in because on episode number 14, throwback. <laughs> uh, I don't remember anything from that. Brian asked if anybody was willing to do the work. He was curious, what was the ratio of shimmer inks to non-shimmer inks? Okay. He said that uh, would be about the ratio of shimmered up pens that he has versus non-shimmered. Sure. After a bit of tedious work, I came to the conclusion that based on your website stock, at least, there is a 109 to 640 ratio. Haha, uh, -ha, fun fact, 109 is a prime number. All right. <laughs> so that equates to about 17.6 to about 17.03% of inks are shimmering inks. That's it, pretty high. At least of what we have. It is high, right? Yeah, I'm surprised. 
Now, I don't know when this was done because episode 14 was a while ago. I'm it assuming was. Jorge we had to was give, watching back. And we had to give Jorge the spotlight, though, because that's just... That's some good math in there, Jorge. That, that is, that he did not need to do that. All right, but, so there uh, you go. 17% of our inks is shimmering. That's you asked for it. That's higher than I would have thought. Yeah. So would you say that you have 17% of your pens are inked up with shimmer inks? Um, Because I think that's where this came from. At least episode right at, 14, Brian did. Right at, the, at, at that time... It may or may not have been an accurate statement. I wouldn't say it's maybe as high a ratio. You right have, now. you have since the multi-tonal inks have been rolling out stronger mm. recently. So I probably have where I normally might have inked up some shimmer inks. I probably have multi-tonals instead. I would probably say that since episode fourteen, you probably have fewer pens inked up, right? I I did go through a concerted yeah. effort to clean a lot of pens. I thought you did. I still have an unreasonable number of pens that are dirty, probably in like the twenty-ish range. But that's after I made a concerted effort to clean at least 50 of them. Uh, so I had probably 70 to 100 that were inked. It was just, it's been a long COVID, all right? It's been a long COVID. Can, can, well, I mean, like, okay, so like we just just did the nib nug for the Pilot Custom 743. Now, yeah. granted, those are not all what I would consider my pens. No. But I had to ink up six pens. Yes, you did. In one sitting. That's right. And those all have to be cleaned out. Granted, I've blessed others with the ability to oh, help me with that. How kind of you. <laughs> Drew, in this case. Uh, this like, so hey, when Drew, you, when you, say, to use these, when so. you say dirty pens, are you just saying, is that just another way to say inked up pens? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Okay. So these aren't like old, crusty, completely evaporated. No, no. no. I'm not talking like a hundred okay. crustified. It sounds worse when you say dirty pens than you say inked up <laughs> pens. Because I hear dirty pens. I'm just that. thinking like they're just like crusty, disgusting. It's probably about a 50-50 ratio oh. of crustified <laughs> Like pens, where, <laughs> pens where it's like, is that inked up? Like, there's not anything in the converter, and you're like, oh no, there's like some crusty, you Gosh. know, sludge down in the bottom of that converter because all of the water has evaporated out oh. of it after three years. Yeah, there's plenty, <sighs> there's plenty of that going on. It hurts but, my you know, soul. Whatever, it's all right. Living my best life. Okay. I got. I'm, I'm stress testing. Stress testing these pens for there the people. For the people. Good man. For the people. Yeah. Um, and I just love fully disassembling my pens when I clean them too. So, making sure that that's necessary. Um, all right, so Jan Arthurton says, I love your niece's guitar. Brian, it is fun that you both love to make things together, encouraging her all the way. Absolutely. I have always drawn and made things with my 10-year-old, and he now loves to draw his own cartoons. I love seeing what he comes up with. That's there you awesome. go. It's awesome. One day your niece is going to just uh, be up on stage rocking out, and she's going to be like, you know, my first guitar it's actually a hunk of wood. A hunk of wood <laughs> that my uncle slapped together one weekend. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, and then lastly, Tiber, t- blah, 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 blah. Tiny Fiber Studio says, Brian, top tip for your Apple Watch, which I forgot to wear today. To stop it randomly switching playback speed, etc., swipe up from the bottom of the screen and tap the water drop. This prevents accidental presses. It's designed to be used while swimming, which I have used before. Press and hold the digital crown to take it out of the water mode again the noise it makes afterward is a speaker expelling water so i knew that but it literally never crossed my mind to put it in like swim mode and while i was uh outside it's basically underwater with all the water that's pouring <laughs> off my arm but that's so super helpful super helpful i will have to do that because randomly my you know no more tracks accidentally will, uh, tracks will change yeah. volume will go up and down yeah. You know, it'll just shut off my audio while I'm trying to do it. And I have gloves on usually. So I got so like no more accidental, and stop and you know, I, soggy glove presses. I'll have like a mask or, you know, eyewear or something like that. So I have to like take off my gloves, pull out my phone, try to do the thing. It usually doesn't work. And then I have to type in my code. And then it, and it's just like this whole ordeal. So Not like, anymore. Forget it. I'm just listening to really loud music. Anyway. Nice. But thank you, Tiny Fiber Studio. Tech tips now. Now I'm smarter. You told me something I should have already known. And now I actually know it more. All right. Thank you for the feedback, everybody. And uh, we got some new stuff to share with you. All right, well, we already spoiled this sort of with a video that we put out a couple days ago, or will have put out a couple days ago by the time this video publishes. But anyway, it's the new Lamy Safari Special Editions. Delightful. They are D, D-E-E, lights. Ah, ah, ah. So we have a Kwaski, Spring Green, <laughs> and Lytros. Lytros. <laughs> That sounds like some Star Trek character's name. It does, doesn't it? Aqua Sky, Spring Green, and Light Rose. But they put all the words together. Tech Officer Lightros, (laughs) to the bridge. That's right. Yes, Captain. Yes, Captain Okwaski. (laughs) 
Uh, anyway, so they're the same price as the regular safaris, but these are uh, delightful. They are more in the pastel family. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a trio of them. So we got a blue, a green, and a rose color one. So go check those out. We got a full video. If you're into safaris, these are three more that you can be into. So got a full video. Check it out. And then we have the Bisconti Medici Il Magnifico. This is Egyptian marble. All the gold happening on this thing. You got some gold marble. You got some gold on top of the sterling. It's a, what did you call it? You said it's not like a pure gold on the cap, but it looks no, like a- No, well, it's, it's the- You called um, it a, like a yellow yellow bronze or so, yeah, rose well, bronze. So That's it, what you it call definitely it. has, yeah, rose bronze is exactly what I said. <laughs> kind of so it, it does like. have yellow gold. Like the clip is glossy yellow gold and then some of the trim, but the actual hardware, like the knob and the cap and the grip yeah, yeah. are, is this more bronzy rose mm -hmm. color. So it's yeah. definitely not gold, but it's not just kind of bronzy steel looking either. It's yeah, got a bit it of a, it's a very interesting color and yeah. a very pretty pen. One yeah. thing that uh, Visconti always manages to consistently knock out of the park are these Il Magnifico pants. Now, granted, they're, they are restrictive from a price point to a lot of people, they but- And they weigh about four pounds. Yeah. So it's like holding a bowling ball in your hand while you write. But, but they are magnificent. <laughs> they are. They're pretty stunning. Really cool to look at. Um, so you're pushing two grand with this pen. So it's a uh, significant investment, but it's good eye candy. So you should at least go check it out. Yeah. And if you ever have a chance to hold one at a pen show or something like that, like yeah. it is- You'll need two hands to Oof. be able to hold it, but it's- no, it's what like it's like sixty grams or something. I mean, it it's like, feels it's it, really substantial. It, I like it. I mean, at least it, it like feels sits. like it should be expensive. It like yes, it does. Yeah, you feel like you're getting your money's worth. Because sometimes you feel a pen that is expensive, and you're like, eh, I don't know, I don't see it. You know, this yeah, one, it's true. like okay, true. What's crazy though is you think like the marble is where all the weight's going to be, and it definitely is heavy. But the cap, which has no marble in it, it's just the silver. That thing is freaking heavy. It's like solid sterling. Yeah, it is. So anyway. Beautiful pen. They've done several versions. They did the red one, green one, black one. Am I forgetting anything? Or is this the fourth in the series they've done? There's done another like one. Is there one I'm missing? Yeah, they did another one. Oh, I a can't blue, right? Which one it is. Yeah, they did a blue. It was like it was a like lapis, lapis one. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, so it's number five, I think. I think the black one has been my favorite. <laughs> I like the green one. The green's pretty good. The green is good. The green is good because that's what's on the, uh, so in Florence, if you go to the Duomo, mm -hmm. they've got a lot of that green mm. marble on the outside, but the red was cool. That was the first one they did. The red marble is what they have on like the base of the statue of David. Ah. So that's why I was oh, like, okay, that, that looks cool. really mm. cool. So it's like a little nod to that. Yeah. Anyway, pretty rad. And then uh, another rad pen, much more on the affordable side is a Twisby Eco in Persian green. It's time for another Eco. That's right. It is time. I will be adding one to my collection, probably in broad, because that's what I always do. <laughs> cool. All right, Drew, what you got? I've got a JR Pocket by Esterbrook. Oh. So we haven't had a um, a new JR Pocket in quite a while. Mm -hmm. And this one is new to us, but has been on the market for a while. And this is the um, pumpkin, uh, pumpkin, what? Pumpkin, pumpkin latte. latte. Yeah. yeah, pumpkin latte. And it's not super pumpkin-y, so don't run for the hills mm -hmm. just yet. It has a tiny little bit of orange in the top finial. The rest is mm -hmm. a smoky color, but yeah. it's a very good looking pen. And yeah. I it doesn't think, look like pumpkin pie or anything crazy. No, no, it certainly doesn't. And in Classy. fact, in fact, with these darker pens, um, apart from the more tropical theming that they've done in the past, I think that this color goes a little bit more with Esterbrook's, uh, with the more classic roots that they're trying to kind of harken back to with mm -hmm. the JR, the J reborn is what that refers to. So the J being the golden age fountain pen that, um, you know, kind of this is uh, paying homage to. So mm -hmm. I like the darker, more subdued colors with yeah. this pen because it, it makes it look a little bit more classic, a little bit more vintage. So mm -hmm. check that out. That is available now and it is 157.50. Yeah. Um, Being honest, I think this has been a little available. We kind of it has, yeah. It was missed, it was it was like a fall thing. Yeah, we kind of missed the initial thing of it, but yeah. I heard that it was a popular, so we were like, okay, we'll add it. Why not? Here we go. Here we go. Also, we've got a new Pro Gear and a new Pro Gear Slim. Ooh. This is blue quasar. So with All Sailor, the they they do this thing where they have so many series, and sometimes you forget that there's an ongoing series because they might only release something in that series like every two years. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the last kind of nebula related, space related pen was, but they've done a couple. So this is Blue yeah, Quasar yeah. now. So mm -hmm. um, another spacey themed pen. And it's just kind of like a blue and a teal, a blue and light blue sort of uh, situation happening. So uh, light blue primary and then 
uh, darker blue cap yeah, blue, and um, blue green nebula. Blue, is that blue part, green nebula. Is that part of the same series, right? I'm guessing it was. Yeah. Every now and then they come out with a space sounding pen, and I just assume it they're does all sound connected. spacey. Yeah, it's like it's sort of like like Lucky Charm, like that teal translucent that color, was, yeah. but it's got some glittery stuff. This in this it. one's like just this light different. This light blue different. and dark blue, and the dark blue like in the cap. The cap has a little bit of sparkle to it. Looks a little bit like you yeah. know toothpaste. Sailor is like they're so subtle on their sparkle. Like yeah. all the sparkle they do is like super tiny. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, because like my, like my Christmas pudding is subtly sparkly. Yeah, but it's not too much. That's how they. Now that I think about it, now that we've done a number of say, yeah pens that's that's pretty much how all their sparkles are right mm -hmm. like you've got one spectrum which is Banu, Banu. which is like chonky glitter and then you get to sailor which is yeah. the finer stuff yeah and everything in between so anyway uh as per usual we've got the pro gear slim at 236 and the full size pro gear at 360 so mm -hmm. those are here um and then a new pen from delta so hot on the heels of the delta dolce vita in blue that we um talked about last week yeah. we've got a classic orange which they're calling the original which makes it sense is because the original yeah it looks the, just like yeah so this delta. isn't the this isn't the old like uber famous uh, oversized Dolce Vita, but this is the standard size Dolce well, they, Vita. They had like five different sizes of Dolce More Vita. More than I knew of, yeah. One, it was a, they had a whole bunch of different sizes. Yeah. This is, I think, like what was the second to largest one. So yeah. this, but I think it's just called Dolce Vita. Yeah, same size as the variants. blue one that yeah. we have been talking about. The same one that mm -hmm. sold out super fast, by the way. So if you were not yeah, able course. to get your hands yeah. on the blue Dolce Vita, this one is coming your way and it will most definitely look like you would expect a Delta Dolce Vita to look like. And if you yeah. don't know what that looks like, here's an image. Look so, at it. And now you have yes. seen it. Hooray. Yep. But that's this is their most iconic fountain pen for sure. But it really looks, it looks, it feels like, I think the only thing different is the nib now because I yeah. think they're using Yovo nibs, whereas previously they were using Bach, yep. which honestly, this is a good upgrade. Like I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So it's here. Good. Check it out. It's tech specs are available and it is $236. Pretty awesome. Solid. Pretty awesome. All right. Uh, now we got questions, Drew. Shall we get right into it? Let's get right into it. All right. Our first question is from Bickies on YouTube. Mm. A hypothetical for you. What would be your greatest of all things Franken pen. Mm. You can use any nib, any feed, any section, any barrel, any cap, and any filling system. Mm. Presume that these components will actually work together. So, for instance, you could use a pilot feed with a Lamy converter if you want. Okay. You can interchange parts between any vendors of your choosing and presume they will be compatible and operate so correctly together. Suspend reality just a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Like, you know, more like aesthetically or functionally. Like yes. This, it'll just magically work somehow. Yep. All of it will cool. magically work. I'm on so, board. Um, the only limit is that... Uh, you can't build one for less than ten thousand dollars. I don't know how we'll actually kind of create that in our head, but or a limit of ten thousand so dollars. Yeah, but I mean, okay. we, we don't really know how to equate that or what parts are worth more than the others. But I mean, nothing that I picked yeah. was anything that would add up to that. Yeah. So, but um, I did want to mention that we did have a Franken Pen episode where we discussed this question or one very similar to it way back in episode four. Wow. So almost eighty episodes ago. Um, it's that been a, a while. Long time ago. It's been a while. And I certainly, I pulled up the notes and I looked and we, we had like 12 questions in that one. And I was like, wow, we really did not well, talk as much back then. Funny about thing. <laughs> I went back and looked as well. Cause I had no idea what I picked. Okay. Um, so I was like, I certainly don't expect our listeners to know what we picked. And I certainly don't expect them all to have listened from episode four to here, but I wanted to know. And when I did go back and look, one of the first things I said as soon as you started talking was, hey, Brian, we're we're at like an hour and 10 minutes. I think that we should, you know, probably try. And then you were like, ah, whatever. Don't worry about it. We'll just keep on going. I am the problem. An hour and 10 minutes. How laughable. Ha. See, we didn't have all the inside jokes back then. We, we were, were trying we to. We were laying the groundwork back. We were, we were trying laying to like, the foundation. We were trying to do like an hour pen cast. I'm like, oh, good. I think an hour and 10 minutes. And we hadn't even turkey hammocked back no. then, Drew. <laughs> this was pre-turkey hammock. Golly. So anyway, mm. just want to lay that out there. So. Anyway, we can we can revisit that because yeah. you know we both have our, we both have our opinions change quite often, and uh, we both forget what our previous opinions were quite often. So I believe there was earlier on in the pencast there was one episode where we had answered a full question like the prior episode, yep. or like two episodes ago. Yes, we did, and we both answered it from fully again and didn't even remember that we did that. And ironically, it was about <laughs> neurodivergence. There you go. 
So how funny. Mm-hmm. But at least we're we're more self aware now. But it's been a while. I like revisiting stuff. Yeah, I mean, question four. I mean, episode four was a long <clears> time ago. Yeah. I, d- I have no idea what I picked before because we didn't type our notes in back then and I didn't feel like rewatching it. So um, I just made up new stuff. So, All right. Let's um, hear it. So I will say I went, Bickies, I went with your question and I suspended a little bit of reality. I was like, none of these components would actually fit together. I don't even know how it would work or what it would look like. Um, but I just went with the I just went with the, the question. And so I said, okay. So um, here we go. For me, I like the overall shape of the Lamy 2000. I just like that torpedo-y kind of shape, but it's still got the ends cut off. It's cool, it's unique, it's very functional. So that as an overall shape, I'm cool with, but slightly larger. Like the, I could go with a larger version of a oh. Lamy 2000 because I got bigger hands, yeah. you know? Not for everybody, but just where I'm going selfish here. This is just me. Yeah, why not? So and like it's still a, lightweight, so like you're a, not gonna compromise like a, on- uh... Yeah, like 50% larger yeah. of a Lamy 2000. Even if it's got a little more weight, I wouldn't be afraid of that. Not as heavy as like the stainless Lamy 2000. Right. Like a little less than that, somewhere in between. A 50% larger Lamy 2000 larger would in diameter. sell so well. Not 50% longer, but like it girthy. Yeah, like yeah, diameter. yeah. Maybe I, I could you. go a little longer, but yeah. I anyway. got you. Um, I would go for a body that's made out of the Homo sapiens basaltic lava material. Oh, okay. That is going to increase some weight a little bit. A little bit, but probably not that much, honestly. That's pretty so, airy. Porous. Yeah, there's, there's porousness happening there. It's probably more like the internal components of a Homo sapiens that give it the weight. Maybe. Yeah, but I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't know. Whatever. We're suspending reality. So I would still make it weigh like maybe 30 grams max. Um, so somehow I'd put that basaltic lava in there. And I would also want some rotten. I don't know how that's going to work. But I love rotten. I love, I want to touch. I want to be able to feel the lava, but I also want rotten to happen somehow. <laughs> I don't know how this would work. Maybe we could embed the rotten into the lava. We could. Somehow. But we I, couldn't seal it in there. I don't know. Mm, okay. I really don't know how. I love this. To I, I love how, this, but how completely. This is what I want. I love it. No, I love it. <laughs> Normally you put a lot more restrictions on yourself about if this. If I'm like but. AI prompting, like some, like make an image of this. I'm just throwing random stuff in there and it just comes I like up with it. it. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I want. I love okay. it. Filling mechanism. So I like, I like the piston on the Lamy 2000. I could go with that, but it'd be kind of cool to have a vacuum filler. So I would make it that a vacuum filler. You know, are pop, we going to, are you still going to have the, uh, not so great ink window on the 2000 or are you going to have a different ink window? I would want some kind of ink window probably. I have no problem with the ink window on the 2000. I'm it's, okay with that. It's just blurry. I think it's, well, it's because of the, the, the way that they like, you know, have the brushed, you know, the brushing yeah, on the outside. Super clearly polished. Yeah, if it was more polished, mm-hmm. which, you know, I would assume that if you were going to do it, you know, in the basaltic lava, then you could have a more polished ink window. Certainly. So you can have I'm, fine you with, I'm fine with the shape and size of the ink window, but polish it up a little bit. So it's a little nice. easier to see, but I'm, I'm not picky on that. Uh, the nib, this is where I totally suspend reality because I don't know how this would work. But I would want the Pilot Custom Yurushi nib. Okay. It won't fit at all because the Lamy 2000 nib is like this teeny little thing. And the Pilot Custom Yurushi is that giant Pilot number 30 with yeah. the, the bicolored nib. Oh, it looks so good. It's springy. It flows great. It's Pilot, so it's going to be awesome. Somehow that needs to fit in there. The cap would need to be larger. Whatever. I okay. don't know. Just that's, we're just all suspending right. reality. And I would want the feed from the Pilot M90, that like swoopy, yeah. kind of angularly cut fit to the, you know. Yeah. Uh, I just think that would look amazing. I'm into it. Yeah. That's a wacky looking cool little pen. It's, it would look pretty weird. I if, love in it. In all honesty, but I don't know. This is a bunch of random components I'm, of things I really love. I'm so here for it. Let's, let's, set the, yeah, let's do it. Fantastic. Now, I'll let you do yours. And then I did ask chat GPT-4 what it would do. You and I was kind of impressed by yes. the answer. So I'll let you do yours <laughs> okay. and then we'll re- we'll visit that. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Um, y'all will know if I'm ever just kind of weakened at burning Brian's, you know, a mannequin shape Brian. He's just totally <laughs> gone full into the chat GPT over here. Yeah, it's taken over. It's- All right. I'm so, not ready to replace myself at this point. <laughs> just load up all the videos I've you ever wouldn't done. You'd be able to. You'd, be, you'd go fake me. I can take a nap. Go, you'd go insane if you weren't <laughs> killing yourself with busyness all day. I know no other way. I know. Um, okay, so um, nib and section E95S. I've fallen completely in love mm, with the way it feels in my hand and the way it ra- writes. So mm-hmm. it bounces just enough for me, um, but uh, also it's not like high maintenance like a soft nib is True. you know it's it, it always flows yeah always flows 
So good. And it feels good. And I love the inlaid nib. And even though the nib isn't removable, I still have not ever had a problem cleaning it. I'm careful with my inks, so it's mm -hmm. not a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. So love that. Um, in my first answer, I did say I wanted the barrel to be made of Tibaldi Impero celluloid, and I mm. still stick by that. Okay. It is the most beautiful material. It's mm. heavily sought after. I'll never get it, but I want it. Um, but I really just want the... Um, pen itself to look like a Pilot Custom Impressions pen. So a Pilot Custom Impressions flat top. Um, so it's this like blue stuff. Oh, inlaid. I've seen yeah, this ab stuff. Ab oh, that is, absolutely stunning. That is good. Right. So um, mm. I want just the flat top Pilot Custom Impressions, you know, a larger pen, but flat ends. But somehow the grip section needs to kind of turn into an e E95 S up at the front. Okay. Um, but it can be larger, you know, it doesn't need to be smaller like the E95 S. Um, and then I want the um, Peniter quill clip that would you see on um, their that more feather expensive. quill. Yeah it's, yeah, it's it's like the Visconti clip in its operation, but it's lower profile and just mm -hmm. a little bit quieter. Yeah, but still very smooth and very functional. Yeah, it's never hard to either insert onto something or remove from something. Yeah, I just think it's you've perfect. always loved that clip. That's like it's a really from nice the day clip. like first time we saw that pen. It you makes were like so much sense. Yeah. It makes so much sense. It's mm -hmm. so easy and it can mm -hmm. operate with one hand. I just love it. And then I, I just want it to be cartridge converter. I don't need a fancy filling mechanism. I prefer cartridge converters. Hmm. I don't need a lot of ink capacity because I like to switch my inks out often. That's true. I want it to be cartridge converter. However, I wanted to take a platinum ink cartridge because those are so easy to disassemble and clean. The converter? Yeah. Yes. And those cartridges are like bulletproof. They're so freaking sturdy. I love them. I love them. Yeah. Oh, the cartridges. Yeah, the platinum the cartridges, cartridges themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And they got like a ball bearing inside of them. Yeah. You know. So, massive. but yeah. but really, the converter is what I love. Like those it, converters it, are hard. It's an expensive converter, but it's yeah. so easy to take apart. Well, it's they've just raised so... the price instead of you know gone for a less expensive converter option. Yeah. So, so all right. That's my pen. That is a Franken pen to be sure. Interesting. I like how we both took a very different take yeah, on this. Yeah, I mean, this. the only thing that stayed the same from my last one was the celluloid. Mm -hmm. My last time I wanted a quill nib from Peniter, but basically turned into something else because I just liked the way it looked. Okay. And then I don't remember what my barrel looked like. Uh, but yeah, switch it up. Did you did you remember what I said? I have no, no. recollection of what I said whatsoever. No, I don't remember what you oh. said. Okay. I think you probably said something about a conid. Um, the coned, uh, coned bulk mechanism. filler or whatever mechanism. Yeah. That is a cool mechanism. I don't remember what nib you picked, though. I don't remember either. Probably Pilot. Probably. Probably. I don't know. We'll see. If only there was a way to find out. But whatever. We're moving forward here. I'm not going in the past. Speaking of moving forward, we asked <laughs> we asked the robot overlords. Um, so I prompted and said this exact question. I just copied, copied and pasted it. it right in there, changed nothing. And here's what uh, the robots had to say. As an AI language model, I don't have personal preferences, but I can suggest a hypothetical greatest of all things Frankenpen based on popular features from well-regarded fountain pens. This Frankenpen will combine the best elements from various manufacturers, materials, and designs, presuming they will work together seamlessly. Nib, Bach 18 karat gold nib, size number six, with an extra fine tip for precise writing and smooth writing experience. Bach nibs are known for their quality and performance. I was like, it's pretty solid that it even knows yeah. what's going on. Okay. So there's that. Um, feed, pilot feed system, which provides excellent ink flow and is known for reliable performance. That's true. I'm like, why not go with pilot nibs? Yeah, with seriously. With the pilot feed. Come on now. Section, Montblanc Miser Stuck section, which offers a comfortable grip and an elegant design of the grip. Okay, sure. Barrel, Viscani Homo Sapiens Barrel, made from lava rock resin. This material provides a unique texture, durability, and a pleasant weight to the pen. Maybe you did get replaced. I'm telling you. Cap, Pelican Suvron cap with its iconic Pelican beak clip. That's was a like, good clip. That's a solid answer. Adding a touch a of elegance and heritage to the pen. I was like, that's a solid answer. That is a solid answer. Filling system, coned bulk filler filling system. This innovative design allows wow. for like, how does he even know about that? Like, wow. what if you're like so small? Like they haven't made a pen in like three years. Yeah, and they're not like- they crazy? They're not gonna be showing up on any Google shopping results either. Yeah, materials, a combination of ebonite celluloid and premium resin providing a luxurious feel and durability. So a hodgepodge of those three, apparently. There you go. With these three, blah, 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 greatest wealth. Yeah. So I was like, I would, I would, all right. I would be a, happy owning that. That's a AI very solid answer. Franken pen. I know, right? I wouldn't turn that down. No, I would not. The lava with the thing. Mm. Yeah. All right, chat, GBT. You're, you're, you're on to something. <laughs> 
All right. Anyway, uh, I got a question for you, Drew. Yes. This is from my Lynn Maynor. Hi, Pencast besties. I was wondering if it's possible to tune a nib without smoothing. I have a pilot nib that's a tiny bit scratchy. Broad nib. It seems the tines are misaligned, but I definitely don't want to mess with any of my pilot smoothness by using any meshes, meaning micro meshes. Yeah. All it's my weird. Other, all my other pilots have been perfect out of the box. Any advice? Go. Gotcha. Uh, it's weird that a broad is, you know, um, scratchy. That's not something you normally see. Even, um, let's see. That is they, weird. That is weird. Uh, my Lynn says that it seems the tines are misaligned. I mean, that's obviously the most important part of this. So, which, which, yeah, if your tines are misaligned, you know, one is higher or lower than the other, then you're going to get drag and scratchiness mm -hmm. likely from either left to right or right to left, depending on which time mm -hmm. is down and which direction you're moving. Um, but usually with the broader the nib, the more it needs to be misaligned for you to really feel it. Mm -hmm. If you've got like an extra fine and it's just a little off, you're gonna feel it. But if you've got a broad, if it's a little off, you kind of don't really notice. It has to be kind of way off for that yeah. to happen. So, mm -hmm. and the fact that, you know, they can see it probably with their naked eye, it probably is way off. Yeah. So um, yes, to answer your question, yes, you can tune a nib. <coughs> Usually it's just referred to as, you know, um, adjusting or realigning um, a nib without using micro mesh. Uh, mm -hmm. If you ever were to use micro mesh or any sort of abrasive to fix a misaligned set of tines, you could do that. But what you're essentially doing is rather than, you know, taking a nib and, you know, from here, moving it in alignment, you're just kind of like taking away material. So it's like, and you're kind of just forcing it to, you know, move into position. And if someone ever did notice like the top was misaligned and ever realigned it, then it's going to be misaligned because you just took away material from one side rather than the other. So mm -hmm. definitely not what you want to do. Anytime you want to actually tune with an abrasive, you have to make sure it's perfectly aligned before you do any of that. Yeah. So um, in your case, it is misaligned. So that's an easy fix. I definitely wouldn't want you to mess with your pilot smoothness either. Mm -hmm. So what you would need to do here, I don't know if you've got a steel or a gold nib. Um, I personally find steel easier to work with, but I've heard you know different opinions there. Uh, if you are able to confidently remove your nib and your feed, oftentimes adjusting a nib out of the feed is easier just because you have more room to work with. And if you're new to this, I wouldn't want you to accidentally try to adjust your nib holding the very tip because that's not where you want to hold. You want to hold a little bit farther back if you can, because otherwise the closer you get to the tip, the more bendable things come because yeah. you can end up, the, the metal you can end up like bending just the tip and they can like yeah kind of throw that out of whack but the yeah. rest of it's still off and yeah you can do some weird stuff so ideally what you're going to want to do is move one tine down um it's usually better to do that because at that point you're not moving anything away from the feed which you want your nib to always be resting ideally like in, you know nice up against the feed yeah. yeah so if you move if you start moving things up you run the risk of moving it too far away and then that could bring about some flow issues. Yeah. It depends how much it's out of whack. If it's just yeah. a... You can do a little, little bit of both. Bit, you can yeah. bring one down, one a little up. Um, <clears throat> but ideally, you know, don't push up too much because that can create another problem. But you really just need to bend it back into place. And with steel, uh, it doesn't spring back quite as much as gold does. So I guess it's in a way easier and harder depending on your perspective but it's harder to do the actual movements but it's more forgiving in terms of like overcorrecting and stuff like that yeah i, I find it's easier i personally think it's easier to adjust steel nibs yeah i, I do too yeah. but it, but they are not as bouncy so if you know they also don't have as many pens with steel nibs that have broad so i would almost oh, assume that's a good point. i would assume that this is probably that's a good gold point. nib yeah yep so yeah, with gold nib, you do need to move it a little farther away for it to snap back into position because essentially you can't just move it up and expect it to stay there. You have to move it a little past the point where you want it and then expect it to spring back. So just take it small, take it slow mm -hmm. and have a loop ready. Have some sort of good quality magnifier ready so that you can make a tiny adjustment and check, make a tiny adjustment and check because you don't want to get into a position where you've now overcorrected and now you need to fix it because you've gone too far. So, you know, just check a lot, make tiny adjustments. Eventually you will get there. Mm -hmm. But um, it's not something that we can really 
you know, walk you through right here and now, but it is possible. And with a little bit of patience and practice and a conservative effort, not wanting to overdo it, you can mm -hmm. certainly get it done. Yeah. yeah. But if you feel like something was like, if this is a pen that's fresh out of the box and you're like, this is weird. I've other Send pilot pens, something's wrong. I mean, pilot's really consistent. It's rare that we see an issue, but it's made by humans. So there always could be an issue. So if you got the pen from us or whoever you got it from, you know, reach out and see if you're like outside of your own level of comfort, just adjusting and stuff like that. If you're not doing anything too crazy, shouldn't be a problem. You definitely don't want to like take it to a micro mesh or try to smooth it or anything because that will violate the warranty of most manufacturers. Also that. So you don't want to mess with it too much because if you do anything to make it even worse, you know, the manufacturer may have an issue with that from a warranty standpoint. So it's so always just use your judgment and then, uh, yeah, you can always reach out to us or whoever you got it from for more professional advice if you want. <clears throat> That's that. Cool. All okay, right. question number three coming to us from Danielle Nonato. Okay. And Danielle says, I saw one of your videos from a few years back calling the Pilot Custom 823 an affordable grail pen. Mm. Any other pens you'd put into this category? It's a good question. It is an affordable it's grail pen. I think, that's yeah. a, I think that's true. Still true. There is no like specific definition of a grail pen. No, I mean, it's you all subjective. I mean? Yeah, it is subjective. I think it's pretty much like, I mean, and it moves too, right? So like for me, when I first started out, a Lamy 2000 was a grail pen. Same. Like any gold nib pen was a grail pen. Yeah. And then it's just weird how somehow you get one. Oh. And then all of a sudden there's something else that's a grail pen. It happens. Um, Lamy 2000 was my first one as well. Like yeah, I thought that right? when I got a 2000, that was going to be it. What could be better than I that? wouldn't need any more pens. And you After were right. I got a 2000. That's it. I it's never bought a single one. Absolutely. Right. I'm totally happy and satisfied now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Me too. Um, I don't know. Do you do you feel like there's some sort of like marker that we should plant, at least just for this conversation, about like where, you know, where should we draw it? Or we could leave it wide open well, if we want. Well, let's say that the, the um, 823, for example, if mm -hmm. we're saying that's an affordable grail pen, you know, that's like what, you know, 380, that's three, something 300, like that. Yeah, it's in the 300-ish range. Okay, so I'd say maybe like... But you know, 450, 500 and below. Yeah, somewhere. that's kind of exactly what I was thinking. Because okay. I was thinking like pretty much if you have something over $500, that's pretty clearly falls into like aspirational territory yeah. for most fountain pen users. I've um, never bought a single fountain pen that was over $300. Okay. Personally. So that would... Yeah. I've traded under... I've traded multiple pens for one okay. that, that has been up there. So you've like Dwight Schrooted your way up to a, yes. a higher pen. Yes. <laughs> Legumes. <laughs> that's right. I've got some legumes. The magic legumes. That's but right. But no, as far as like a straight up purchase, um, no, I've never exceeded three hundred dollars. Um, I have. Oh, I know. On many occasions, I know. <laughs> but <laughs> that doesn't mean you have to. No, no. Trust no. me, you do not have to spend that much money to really enjoy your pens. Also, these but, these these, pay, <clears throat> these payment things that all these websites have now are it's oh, so yeah. so bad for me. It's right. I mean, you see payment blades. They have payments for on like everything. Oh, I went, to, I went to buy some like, I have some like uh, noise canceling headphones and I went to buy just replacement like earmuffs because mm. I've had it for like five years. And I was like, oh, the earmuffs are bad, but the headphones are still good. I was like, oh, I could probably get replacements. They had like a payment plan for those. How much were they? It was like $19 for replacement earmuffs. Do you want, do you want to know, the, <laughs> do you want to know the cheapest thing I've ever done a payment plan for? Oh boy, what? $40. <laughs> okay. I did. I was like, you know what? Yeah, I could. I, mean, it was I could free, do forty, right? but like, it was something I didn't need, so I just felt better about it. <laughs> oh boy, doing that's, like, that's dangerous. Doing like a few payments of that's fifteen, dangerous. I'm like, eh, it's not even a big deal now. Yeah, you're still you're still paying for it. <laughs> just you know, be clear. But, okay, uh, Dad. Yes. yes. Jeez. Now, now, son. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Uh, back so to the question. So, five hundred. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I had in okay. mind. So, like, if you know, because I, I honestly I could justify pens that are more expensive than that as being like a good value for what they are. Well, it's kind of your job to do that, but right? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's my job to convince everybody <laughs> they need everything, right? But no, 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 I mean, like, in my mind, I'm thinking like, holy grail is like that aspirational kind of reaching for it kind of a thing. Maybe I'll get it one day kind of a pen. Yeah. Well, we both agreed 2000, yeah. like, yeah, that, that definitely fit. That's a good, that's, that's a good a, like entry level. That's an affordable grill pen. pen. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. We've yeah, both been definitely, there. Definitely. I mean, all, there's a lot of pens that we talk about all the time, basically. I think you're pretty much into gold nibs most of the time when you're talking grail pens. So it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Yeah, like the, the Dolce Vita, I was, you know, could, yeah. you know, that's a steel nib. And yeah, um, that's so, true. Could that could definitely well. be a grail pen for a lot of folks, yeah. for sure. Um, so I went with the ones that I ended up choosing. I actually chose two. I, I chose three pens for myself. So I chose two that are gold nib and one that's actually not. So 
You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be. So uh, first one I chose was the Platinum Kanazawa Leaf Makie Pads. Oh, that's an interesting choice. Yeah. Not I've, super popular. I've always felt like those Kanazawa Leaf Makie Pens were under rated not talked about as much as they should they write great they do i actually i love that nib one, so much one of one of the few successful personal one-on-one -on -one interactions i've had with my family to get them into fountain pens was with a kanazawa leaf makie pen it was my sister um i she had a few different pens but when she used she had that one and it was beautiful she liked it but she never wanted to use it because it was too expensive mm -hmm. or whatever and i was like really just use it and she used it and she was like this thing writes so good and she loves it yeah so i mean that pen's like just over 200 bucks i think is and that that's a gold nib though it's a gold nib i yeah. really wish platinum put that nib on more pens the, yeah i love the, i will pick that nib over a 3776 nib yeah. any day of the week well they used to absolutely i don't know if they still do the modern maquille was the same nib but with a simpler maquille design I it was think, like closer to 150 it was and I, I used to have one of those i yeah I, I did sell we carried one, them but, at the time but then i think they phased them out or i think so modern maquille i think came back but i think they have steel nibs now Oh really? Maybe uh, they they might. I, I don't mean, know. this this is one of those situations where like they offer all kinds of stuff in Japan. Yeah. Sometimes they either stop making something or they stop offering it outside of Japan, and we just don't quite get the memo. Because they did that what same thing with like the cool and the balance. And, yeah. But that was like the steel nib version, but only yeah. some of them had the gold nib. But that gold nib, that short platinum nib. Yeah. God, I love it. Yeah. So, so that, good. but still, the plat the Kanazawa leaf makie, it is one of the most affordable makies. It doesn't look like this like makie that like an eight year old would do, you know, yeah. like oversimplified makie. Snap cap, relatively thin pen. It's a it's a thin, it's a lighter pen. So if you're looking for something that like heft equals quality, it's different than that. Like that's most of the Japanese companies, they don't do super heavy pens. For them, it's actually the opposite. It's like the lighter the pen, the higher the quality usually. It's a very different mentality than we have in the US. Um, but that's a great pen I've always felt is kind of a sleeper. Um, another one I have, this is going to be a weird one that we don't talk about Let's a lot. Let's get weird. It has the Pilot Vanishing Point stripes. So this is the metal one that's got kind of like the ribs on it. It's, it's just over 300, not, not, it's just not, over $300. Not the rotten one. Nope. It's not rotten. It's all metal. So that's, that alone is kind of weird because I wouldn't normally pick that. But that was another one that I always felt was like, this feels like so much higher quality pen. Hmm. I don't know exactly why, just the feel of the, like the fluting on that pen. Like it's nice and round. There's no sharpness to it. It feels very sturdy. It looks really classy. It doesn't fingerprint too bad. It's It looks really, really nice. And All I've right. just always felt like that's a stunner of a pen. So, you know, you could debate that one because you can get finishing points and a lot of other finishes for less money than that. But I don't know, to me, I always felt like it was a pretty good deal. Um, and then the last one that I had was one that we do talk about a lot more, the Diplomat Arrow. I think that it is a steel nib pen. You're approaching gold nib entry price You're talking territory. About that, 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 that pen yeah, right there? That pen. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not a pen that a lot of people talk about. Yeah. We're going to the, the pilot one. Yeah. Um, yeah, but like holding it in my hand, it feels really, really nice. Anyway, um, last one I had was Diplomat Arrow. And there's lots of variations of this, but I think honestly just like classic arrow, especially like in a color that you really, really like. Mm -hmm. I definitely could see that being a more kind of aspirational pen yeah. for some folks. And just like the fit and finish on it and the way that that cap closes is like one of the most satisfying pens it is. ever. And it's just super reliable. So I think that also could be arguably a, an uh, aspirational grail pen. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Okay. Um, I, I thought about the Lamy 2000 when I read this question. And mm -hmm. then I also thought about a relatively new pen, mm -hmm. the Visconti Opera Gold. I thought about that too. So that one that was that, on, one, that was on my short list. Yeah. So I thought that would be a good recommendation because a lot of Visconti pens exist in that Grail pen category, it's and they're all and they're company, all over yeah. five hundred. Sure. So unless you wanted to think about the the Van Gogh or the Rembrandt, you know, the, mm -hmm. the Mirage Mythos is also good pens, but all three of those, mm -hmm. they're not. They don't kind of feel like a more expensive pen like the Opera Gold does. The mm. Opera Gold does, like it, it, the Opera Gold looks like an opera, which up until this pen has only ever been available in the over $500 yeah. range. Oh, for sure. So Well to, into that, yeah. Yeah, very, like a, a 800 Close to 1,000 usually, yeah. yeah. So to me, 
getting that same build quality with a steel nib on it, because that's really the only difference. Like everything else functionally is yeah. an opera. The same mm. resins, the same metals, the same hook safe mm. lock, the piston filler, a better, sorry, the vacuum filler, power filler, even a better power filler, if you could argue, because of that, that beefy rod. Thick rod, yeah. So, you know, I think that this one does transcend grail barriers in a really interesting way yeah. below that it carries a lot part. of the aspects that would make the opera a, a, a whatever a, a grail pen yeah and and brings, brings it, it down, down to a more accessible area yeah, yeah so i think that's a great choice that's pretty solid and then did you oh, mention oh, you yeah. didn't mention the middle one there. i mean the, the pilot falcon like that one like the 2000 oh, that's a good one i think that like for me that's still kind of a grail pen for me like i mm. i've owned fa nibs before but i don't ever actually own a falcon um huh I, I wish it was a little heavier. That that pen's almost a little bit too light for me. It's almost like they should make one out of metal. I don't know. That one's so expensive, though. It's a grill pen. It's the same nib. Yeah? But, yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe if we still carry the brown one, but we don't anymore. Yeah, you know why we don't? Because no one Because no one could handle it. No one wanted Golly. it. Golly. <laughs> anyway, the, yeah, the Pilot Falcon's a good one, and that brings with yeah. it a different experience, too. So you do feel like you're, you're going into a different zone. So while it isn't price restrictive like a lot of grail pens are mm -hmm. once achieved it it gives you kind of like a new like you're unlocking a new experience yeah it's a mm -hmm. new adventure it's a new writing adventure because it writes unlike anything you've ever experienced up until that point yeah fair enough solid, yeah. solid arguments there no, we go no disagreements cool all right <clears throat> margaret mclaren says what's the best way that i could possibly teach myself to use a broader nib size I don't understand this question at all. I can write well with an extra fine, but once I pass a pilot medium, my writing gets extra not fine and skippy. Is this what your experience is? Does your, no. Do you find it harder to use broad nibs? Like, cause I hear this fairly regularly. Like people are like, oh yeah, finer nibs I can write fine. But as soon as I get a broader nib, my handwriting goes to heck. And I'm like, that is literally the opposite for me. I don't understand how this happens. Um, Why are I, we having such different experiences? For me, it's less of a matter of any skipping or writing issues and more of a, I just need to change my letters like a mm. lot because- Is it like you're writing, you used to writing small? Yeah. And when you have like a broader nib, it like bleeds together and looks yeah. kind of mushy? Yeah. Okay. That so, I could see. So that 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 is most of what I'm going to focus on, but also I'm going to hope to hit some of the- um, my writing gets extra not fine. Um, <laughs> I like that. So yeah, um, one thing I, I might think is that with an extra fine nib, what could happen is that you really have a very, um, it's kind of like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good analogy here. Um, if you've got a uh, knife, you know, mm -hmm. and you've got a very, like uh, like a, a a curved blade or something like that, but it's a very small curve. Basically what I'm trying to say is that rotation is less of a factor with an extra fine because there's simply not a lot of real estate there to rotate. Hmm. There's not a lot of dead, not a lot of dead zone. Okay. So if the extra fine is on the paper, odds are if it's touching the paper, you're connecting with the slit in between the nib and ink is flowing. I see what you're saying. With so a larger this, nib. Yeah, with less tipping material, essentially you're like contact point for where like the slit and basically like the ink is pretty much making contact with the paper. Less margin of error. Pretty much anywhere. But with a big ball, you've got the slit in there. If you rotate that, you're essentially kind of like lifting the yeah. slit of the nib off the page. Yes. I see. So that's, what, that's my theory anyway. So you think it's a rotation in the hand issue? I do. Like rotating left to right. I do, or you know, maybe, and and it might just be a, a you know maybe a, what is always a trigger for me is if my writing starts to get more funky toward the right side of the page or to the left side of the page. Mm -hmm. I know that for a while I was writing with certain notebooks that just weren't lying flat, and I had that that bowl oh, that, that hump, yeah. that hump, you know. Mm -hmm. And every time I got over there, it was it was screwing me up. So I you know, either needed to find a way to press it more flat or switch to a different notebook. Mm. Um, and then sometimes it happened on the right side because the just the way my elbow was positioned, once I got, once my um, wrist started going over here, I'm no longer writing my normal angle here. 
I'm kind of like, oh, you're like doing that. Moving it around. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. instead I need to just make sure that my elbow moves, mm -hmm. you know, and that, mm -hmm. that stays static and locked okay. off. So that can be a factor as well. <clears throat> but what might be happening is that you might just be moving across the line and then making small adjustments with your wrist or your forearm and even a little bit of rotation, especially if you're used to riding with extra fine nibs, a little bit of rotation could be throwing things a little out of hmm. whack. So what I would recommend, okay. and this can help with both, I think, is practicing on some uh, double lines. So get some lined paper and choose, or you know, kind of force yourself to use up both lines. Have your, your capital letters and your L's and your T's and whatnot going mm -hmm. all the way to the top and really use all of that real estate to A, practice you know not rotating and practice getting a consistent line mm -hmm. and b um adjusting your letter style to better you know adapt to the larger broader nibs like for me mm -hmm. i had to do that because my e's were not looking like e's i had mm -hmm. no hole in the e hmm. and so i needed to start start writing a little bit larger and right. realizing my space needed to be adapted to make sure that my E's didn't look like eyes mm. because it, it was basically an I without a dot because hmm. I, was close, I was closing my gap. Interesting. So once I started writing larger for longer period, periods of time, I was able to kind of scale that down a little bit back onto a single line mm. and my spacing was different because you sometimes just need to write differently depending on which pen you're using or which sort this of nibs you're using. This is true. So that helped me personally. But um, for me, it was less of a um, skipping issue and more of a cramped, you know, just jankety handwriting sort of issue. You know what I wonder too, as you're talking, I'm thinking about, um, I'm not a handwriting expert by any means, which is going to segue into our next question. But um, I know from talking to others and um, Michael Saul's book, Art of Cursed Penmanship, he really explains a lot about hand position mm -hmm. and all the posture and how all this impacts your handwriting. And he talks about, you know, basically using a combination of your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist, and your fingers. And basically, if you look at your body, you can tell you don't have the same size tendons in your fingers as you might in your elbow or your shoulder. So, you know, your smaller joints are going to get tired more quickly. They have more precise control so for those of us who haven't been like really trained in handwriting or have used maybe just whatever writing and, you know, pen, pen, ballpoint pens and all this kind of stuff, a lot of people overuse their fingers. And so they're used to like scribbling and using these muscles yeah. a lot, which is why your hand gets real tired. Yeah. But when you're writing a lot and more like kind of long form and stuff like that, you want to use those larger muscles. That's what's going to keep you from getting fatigued as much, but you don't have as much control. So it's not most people's natural instinct, you know, plus based on posture and things like that, you need to be at a certain height and have your elbow bent at a certain way to be able to use all of the upper muscles more. And it takes practice to do that with control. But what I wonder, I'm sort of, you know, thinking out loud here a little bit, but I wonder if people who are tending to struggle more with broad nibs are writing more with their fingers because if you're using your small muscles and you're having to write in bigger strokes than you normally would with a broader nib, it can feel much more unnatural. Mm -hmm. You know, me personally, I have a heavier hand. So like broad nibs, they flow well. You know, I tend to have bigger handwriting anyway though I used to have microscopic handwriting when I was younger in school, but I've gotten to bigger. So for me, broader nibs felt a little more natural. And so I, like from the get with fountain pens, I was essentially practicing writing in bigger scripts. I was using like Clairefontaine lined paper, which has like eight millimeter ruling. It's pretty wide. That's a lot of what I practiced on when I first got into fountain pens. Yeah. So I always felt like using a fine nib, I had less control because it showed the squiggliness of all my writing. So I actually liked broad nibs because it sort of like smoothed out mm -hmm. some of my squiggliness. Um, but I have to wonder if those who are used to writing small, especially with like, you know, other t other writing instruments before they get into the fountain pens. I'm totally speculating here. I don't know if this is your situation, Margaret, but we're throwing you know, a lot of yeah. I'm just kind of I'm, out there. Something to think about. You know, just maybe observe how you're writing and think about that. Think about. If you're writing, you know, it does take intentional practice to get good control while using some of your like upper muscles in your arm for your writing. Um, it could be, I wonder, I'm, I'm more like throwing this out there as a, a wondering question, but I wonder if there's any relationship between, you know, 
what type of like muscles people are using when they write and which nibs they find to be, they get the most control. I don't know. Hmm. Just something I never really thought about before. So yeah, well, yeah. we've got some possibilities. Yeah. Um, this is, if you want to ever um, reach out to our customer care department and actually have some back and forth about troubleshooting, you know, how your pen's performance is going, they're always more than willing and excited to help. So yeah, we can only give a one way answer here, but if you did want yeah. additional uh, conversation, uh, mm. email us at info at Yeah. And leave us some feedback in the comments too. Let us know what your experience has been with these because yeah. it is different for everybody for sure. All right. We got one more question. We are going to finish things off with uh, Rico Flishas. Rico Flishas. Anyway, okay. the question that is asked is why don't you have tutorials for improving writing or as it is called penmanship? Well, I told you it was going to be a good segue, right? Right. Well, you just got question? done telling us that you're an expert in this, so why don't yeah. you talk about it more? Isn't that what you said? I heard expert and I am. <laughs> I, I said the word not in oh! there in between, which there is an go. important I, distinction. I, I, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, we've, we've touched on handwriting here and there. I just did a little bit. But here's the thing, like, I'm not an expert. And you're not an expert. <laughs> like, when it comes to handwriting, that is, that is like... A, a, an art that is a there's a performative aspect to that and there's no way that I could confidently do a video and be like this is how you should do everything and then you see my handwriting and be like um <laughs> is that the result that I'm trying to achieve because uh I don't want it's that. not that great no your it's handwriting not is, bad your handwriting is good it's not bad but it's not great like I'm very aware and I've really plateaued like it it improved the first couple of years Same. I was using fountain pens and Same. then for me to improve more, I would have to like have a practice regimen. Yeah. And I just definitely don't. So I'm the same way. I don't my, my L's next to each other still are not the same size. Oh, like I'm wildly inconsistent. Same. Sometimes my T's have loops and my L's are straight up and yes, down. Yes. Yes. I mix and match. It's it's pretty bad. I still don't know how to do a capital G properly. Oh. I just I I do mine differently because that's my last name. I print my G's. I still do. Oh I see so you got a capital D. That's one of my favorite. That's a great one. Capital D and capital L. Those are like my well, choice. You my, know what I hate? B's and G's. Don't love writing those. I like a B. A B's fun. It's fine. It's not. It's no D though. D is just like. Yeah. Well, my 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 D is like my uh, signature uh, is just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my signature is just giant crazy D squiggle squiggle giant C giant B squiggle squiggle squiggle. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't love. I mean. Yeah, you got some fun letters in yours, but man, capital L's, that'd be great. I can do those all day. I don't know. See, I would like my end, my last name to end with a T because you can do that quick, like, you know, single line. Single T, line. That, that, that is fun. Because I got that going on. That yeah, is fun. That's a fun way to end, yeah. a, end a word. But I got the, the L, E, and T. Boy, I tell you, sometimes my L is straight. My E <laughs> is bigger than the L. The T's got a loop. <laughs> And then I cross it, but I cross the L instead of the T. It's craziness. So suffice to say, we are sometimes absolutely it looks, it looks the authority like, you need to be listening to. Sometimes my name looks like Gutel because I mix like the T and the L. I just it's oh, bad. That sounds like a great cracker topping. I will off yeah Gutel. That's right <laughs> Gutella. I will I will often dot my E's instead of my I's. Oh, you know, yeah. especially if I got a. I'm not like stopping because you know if you're writing cursive. I'm writing all my words and then I'm going back, I'm dotting stuff and I put like a dot over the N and have I've you got ever, I'm like, there's I've, like seven dots in this word. I've actually missed an I before and I've just like put a dot above like where it should be and just to hope <laughs> someone doesn't, like just assumes that it's there. I'm so like, you put the dot, but there's no I. No, but there's like nice. an E or an R. So maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't yeah. notice. Maybe they just see the dot and they move on. That's and they all right. Don't, that's it's, all right. It's, it's all about deception. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen there's Don't like look a, at this. Yeah, that's right. You can totally like swap letters in the middle of words and stuff like that. As long as the starting letter and the ending letter is the is I've heard correct, that. yeah, you can jumble up a lot in the middle, and you can it's surprisingly readable. Like try that with an entire paragraph; it's pretty fun. I've I've, I've seen one of those on the internet. Yeah, it was like a Cambridge study, whatever. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Anyway, um, so that's pretty fun. Oh, okay. Anyway, anyway, to get back to all this, we basically don't know what we're talking about, so it would be fumbling. Bumbleness. Despite we what, were talking despite, about despite this pen cast, we actually do as a company. <laughs> we do care like, to be right a lot. <laughs> we really do. Um, we we do care to make sure that we can provide good education, and we're not going to uh, try to do something we don't feel qualified to do. And if we do, we will come out right and say it. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, we're not experts. I will play devil, devil's advocate to ourselves here. We probably don't give ourselves enough credit for like what we've been able to learn. And like the fact that we don't have to be like a performative expert with handwriting and still be able to teach the principles of good handwriting that would be of value and educative to others. Maybe not necessarily like inspirational, aspirational in terms of, you know, Michael Saul. what they could yeah. ultimately achieve. That's more like calligraphy type stuff. Um, you know, I think about somebody like Jake Weidman comes to mind. His stuff is like aspirational to a, a fault almost. It's just like, oh my gosh, this is so incredible. Yeah, that's not even a... <laughs> but it, it shows what's possible, right? You'll look at mine or yours and be like, Oh, that's definitely possible. Oh, like, he still knows how to write in cursive. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's cool. You could like be like, that's oh, about it. well, I get right better than that right now. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe there's maybe there's an attainability. Maybe we're underselling it, Drew. I don't oh, know. No, I mean, if, maybe if, it's like an attainability to our handwriting. All of my like non-fountain pen friends think I have amazing handwriting. I know, and right? I absolutely do not because because I know, like I, I follow all the hobbies on oh. Instagram. She is like, blows my mind. Oh, for sure. Not even like, you know, influencer level type stuff, but like we get letters from customers of ours and stuff oh, like that. Oh yeah, that we I saw a letter like, on my desk that just this is unbelievable. Like like some people have some wrote really it. cool handwriting. So you know, I don't know. I'm torn on this one because my thought has always been, this is not our wheelhouse. Like I don't feel qualified to be able to put something out about this. But maybe there is a degree of education that we can provide with handwriting there probably is that we're something. that we are qualified for. But also in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like this would be a great opportunity to collaborate with somebody who does a lot with handwriting or calligrapher does something related to that. That's I've had, point. I've had preliminary conversations with many different calligraphers and, and people like Jake and all that. The problem is they're all really freaking busy and so are we. So I've never actually been able to land that plane and collaborate and do something together, especially cause like shooting an, in a super instructional video like that with somebody that's not like here in the building is super tough. So yeah. I'm totally open to the idea. Maybe y'all can give us some feedback about like, what would this look like? Like what what would you want to see from us in terms of learning about this? Is it more like, I feel like we could definitely educate and have some basics of like posture and how to write, like more like the, the I don't know, not so much like the looping of the letters and all that kind of stuff, but just like how to set yourself up for success with getting in the right position and all that kind of stuff that I feel like I could cover. I don't know. I always write but, hunched over and with my fingers. So I'm okay. So I'm, you're a bad example. No, I'm terrible. So Drew won't yeah. be involved in this one, <laughs> but um, I feel like I could get there. But when it comes time to like actually teach like letter form and stuff like that, I really don't know yeah. that stuff. I would have to collaborate with somebody who knows that more. So I don't know if you have anybody in mind who, you know, that's really knowledgeable about that, that you think would be a good collab. Let us know. Or, you know, I don't know if you see other examples of people that do that type of instruction that we can maybe seek inspiration from. I'm totally open to it because we do get asked about this a lot. I just I never have a great answer. <laughs> you know? No. Well, yeah, I, I didn't expect us to, but I, we don't talk about it often. So, yeah. Figured so it's we'd a good gauge. Throw like, it out there. You know, where, what are you interested in? Yeah. So there you go. Well, um, definitely you can ask us in, you know, YouTube comments. Uh, you can email us at pencast at gooliapens.com, especially if you're an audio listener. Um, give us any more feedback you know, and uh, questions for future Q and A's because uh, we like them. All right, we got a hypothetical, Drew. You think we got time for it? We can make it quick. Yeah. We can you make make it quick. You gonna pick one of these three? Yeah, I'll pick one. All right. All right. So, I did use an AI prompt to generate these ones. So there's that full disclosure. Um, but it came up with some decent ones. So, do you want one that is like pen writing related, or do you want one that is just totally off the wall? Find the most titillating of the three. The most titillating of the three. Okay, I think I think the writing one is actually pretty interesting. Okay. Okay. Would you rather be able to speak and understand every human language fluently, but lose the ability to read and write, or be able to read and write in every language, but lose the ability to speak and understand spoken words? Oh, uh, yeah, I definitely... Uh the first one i need to speak you so you would you would lose the ability to read and write yeah all together absolutely you would take speaking and listening 100 percent. okay i'm not going to deprive these kind of people of the pen cast come on we would never this be is able the to, one thing good i do in my life we'd never be able to produce that handwriting <laughs> video drew if that's you, uh... fine that's fine i mean i can do other things with fountain pen other than write letters i mean that's true i can doodle that's true. That yeah. is that is kind of a loophole, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine. 
I guess, do we, how strictly do we interpret the writing portion of this question? I guess it would be writing like words for communication. Yeah. Yeah, you, could, you could like you could like pictionary your way through life, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> just doodle out every or, day. And, and 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 you know, uh, you know, uh, flipping flipping that on the other side, you could use uh, do some um, charades uh, if you can't speak. So that's true. Or also, there's sign language. Sign I don't know language? why I just jumped right to charades. Or actually, I is mean, a... charades would get you by until you can <laughs> until you, know, you can do learn some ASL. Sign language. Yeah, yeah. So no, I would definitely. I need to speak. I you need to communicate to have good relationships in life and you could never watch well you could you could watch movies yeah but you couldn't read that's fine yeah i listen to my books anyway <laughs> that's true yeah that's an easy one yeah okay i thought there'd be more debate you with not. me on that um it would be t i don't like questions like this where i'm like i don't want either one of these outcomes but i guess that's kind of the point yeah you're i mean you, you want to be able to speak to your children I mean, it would have on. to it would have like, to be speech yeah yeah and i'm 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 a really slow reader anyway, so it's yeah, kind of a painful, it's painful process. No, I turn the page and I forget what was on the previous page. I yeah. can't do it. And I feel like the way, like with the technology tools that we have right now, like you can do speech to text, you can have things read to you. So I feel like it's a little easier to get by if you can, you know, do audio only as opposed to text only. But also I feel like if you're text only, that's like you're naturally forcing yourself to go more introvert, mm -hmm. which would be, that would be a little tougher for me. I'm a little more on the extroverted side. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine going to one of these really helpful business conferences you go to and not being able to say anything, be like, <laughs> and like, you really want to chime in, you want to ask a question, you just like, oh, let me get on my app. No, 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 don't leave, don't leave. Ah! Tough. Oh, it's you'd, tough. You'd, you'd die, that'd be terrible. Yeah, yeah. But then someone like um, Jen, uh, who like reads books like it's breathing, right? she would go, absolutely, yeah. I don't need to talk. I've got, an, fine. I've got an aunt who reads and she's got a phenomenal memory. She reads like, I think like two books a day. Yeah. Like in her, just on average, it's like not her job. It was just like, she like speed reads basically yeah. and remembers it all. And I'm just like, that is not my experience in life. Like that would be tougher. That'd I be tougher be, to give up. Man, if I remembered everything I read, I would be so smart. If I remembered much of anything I read, Golly. it'd be a game changer. Man. <laughs> okay, cool. There we there go. There we go. All right, um, we do have a spotlight, pen spotlight this week. The Pilot Custom 743. There we are. Not 74, 743. And uh, yeah, we've got them inked up. We did them in the Nibnook and we're gonna uh, show you how they write. So we have the Pilot Custom 743. It is of the similar size to the Pilot Custom 823. And what do you have there? This, that's a well, so here's the thing. I'm not going to write with all six of these because that's well, you just going to write with the extra fine. Okay, I'll write it's with the extra fine. so good. Or give me, I'll just, write with the extra fine. You should write with the that extra fine. That is such a good, good nib. Okay, so this is, here you go. If you want to get a little close up of the nib, I don't know how the lighting is going to work for you. There you go. So this is the number 15 nib. So this is uh, the same size as what's on the 823. Yep. Yep. Beautiful. So bigger than the Custom 74, bigger than the 912. Now this is just blank paper, so you don't necessarily. There you go. Look you at just that. Dot your I pee? dotted in the middle of the P. <laughs> Violet Custom. Seven, I love this nib so three, much. So the great three. thing about this nib is that it is so 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 very fine, and it is not draggy or toothy at all. It is it really so is. ridiculous and I'm, smooth. I'm not normally a big fan of extra fines. To me, it's always like a compromise. I'm like, okay, I need to write small, so I'll put up with this extra fine. This is honestly one of the more pleasurable extra finds it's so that good. I've pretty much ever it's written It's so with. good. It's so smooth and the flow is so ridiculously consistent. It really is good. Some extra finds can be a little stingy. Uh, some pen uh, designers, manufacturers, fine. make sure you get that extra fine nib by you know kind of controlling the ink flow a little bit. Oh, see there, I got looped my eye. Why did I do that? Yay. I don't know. The Pilot. Pilot. Custom. I, I often, I often do that too. Fine. Sometimes I've actually gotten our hand handwriting confused, Brian. Sometimes, what? They, sometimes, really? they, yeah. Sometimes they look, certain words you would, yeah. you would stand out a lot. Yeah. So these are not drastically different. Like no, the fines the fines are pretty standard. The, fine and the extra fine. fine. Now there is a big jump up to the medium. Probably, I'm assuming because they in in Japan probably they have a medium fine version of this. If I would assume, um, so there is going to be a more noticeable difference here. Oh yeah. 
Oh, this is where I'm, this is what I'm talking. I mean, about. no, that's nice too. Like that's when I mean, this is just things, things start. Look to how much really, ink is coming out I know, of there. Things really start to glide after you oh, get the to this feel point. of it. Is like okay, yes, I use these and I'm like, yeah, this is really good. And I go this, I'm like, nope, this is better. <laughs> like way better. I like this. Oh, just it's so smooth, so smooth, and the ink is so much wetter. It's hard to tell because this is like a dark black ink. This is Noodler's Black. This is what we use for the nib nook. So it doesn't really show it off, but when you're using, especially like a chroma shading or, or just an, even an ink that has just decent shading, it just, the ink looks darker, more saturated. You get more shading that appears. It's, it's just, I love it. Um, this is the Broad. I guess I am writing with every nib. I said I wasn't going to. Yeah, why not? When we got them all linked up. Well, right? I think it's important to, when we get to the double broad, having the broad there for comparison. Yeah, that's true. Pilot comes 74. Some, oh my gosh, I keep wanting to call it because I'm There's not a big difference between the medium and the broad, is there? I mean, there. It's almost like you've it's, got. It's more subtle. It's almost like you've got the fine and then the extra fine. There's a big jump. And there's then a big jump here. Medium and broad. I don't know why I'm going with this squiggle like right there, but I'm just kind of running with it. That's what we do. Oh, the broad feels so good. All right, you ready for a big, big old honker? Yes. The double broad. This and is. I got weird. to write with this too last week when I did the uh, what's new video, and mm -hmm. it was it was delicious. Now look at the size of the tipping on this thing. Oh yeah, it's I a, mean it's, it's just a it's massive. Yeah. Okay. Oh yes. <laughs> look at that. Golly. Fire hose. Yeah. If you like to change your ink often, this is a good way to do it. Yes, indeed. Good thing you have a uh, Con seventy converter in here to hold all that ink, right? Oh, good thing. Yeah, that's right. Look at that. I got to go so much. Further out, it's the best so pilot many, converter yeah. they have. <laughs> wow, well said. <laughs> All right, double broad, very wet, very smooth. I like it. And then this one, the Falcon or the FA, as they have the little sticker on there. You know, I have always had trouble with the Falcon on the 912. This is different than the Falcon on the Falcon. Yeah, this is the other the other Falcon. But I got to say, when I used this for the first time, I was like, okay, okay, yeah. I get it. So if you just write with a light touch, you know, it's closer to that fine nib. Not quite extra fine, but probably closer to a fine. Maybe medium fine, it's hard to tell. Um, but I'll write these. 743, my mic is getting in the way of my writing now. So this is the FA. There we go. Falcon. Oh gosh, what would I do there? Okay, whatever. But then when you get into a little bit of flexiness. Oh yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. So you add a little bit of pressure to it. And I'm not really putting a lot of pressure. No, there. that really isn't. And my experience previously with the Falcon on the 912 is I found that it works better if you hold it at a more upright angle. Right. I feel like this one's more forgiving it at a lower is. angle. I've definitely found that to be the case. So I I would not have thought that there would be this much of a difference in writing with the Falcon on this pen versus the other. And here I'll try to actually just write, you know, oh gosh, I'm not I'm not the best at flexing while writing, but just to show like a little bit of what you can do as you're writing letters, right? That looks really good. Thank you. I do have to like really change my hand position when I do it. Like I have to turn the page more because uh, you like you can't flex it while you're going on a cross stroke. So I do have to really change my angle. Yeah, whenever I'm using any nib with flex, I go straight under. Yeah, so it takes it takes definitely some getting used to, which is why also you hear some people that just like don't like certain flex nibs or whatever. It's because it's different for everybody. Oh, I decided to cross the seven on that one. There you go, fancy lad. I just feel like it needs to be fancy. There you go. Okay. But see, I got to go a lot slower and I got to think about like every single stroke. There you go. But you can see its potential, right? Stunning. So it looks very different. So yes. I wanted to keep one of these and the Falcon is the one I'm, oh, look at this. Oh, you yeah. Wanna, you want to write, don't you? I just, I just like this one. I mean, hold the phone for you. That's okay. You got it. Look at you. Ah, uh, <laughs> God, I love it. So good, We don't right? need to put this back on the shelf, right? We can just kind of- Oh, I'm keeping this one. Oh, good, man. I'm keeping the Falcon. Good. So, yeah. I like to I like to keep different nibs across different brands anyway. And then when I used this Falcon, I was like, yep, this is the one. 
this is the one I'm keeping. So there you go. There's a little tour of the uh, Custom 743. That's a nice pen. Plain black pen with gold trim. Seems kind of boring. It does, but, but you the know. The nibs are exciting and the pen is so just rock solid. Yeah. It's a great pen. It's just an overall reliable pen. And every one of these nibs is just as reliable too. There you go. Okay, so next segment, Drew, what's happening? Are you asking me what's happening? I'm asking you, what is happening? What? Or what has happened, technically, is what we're actually talking that's about. That's true, that's true. Well, I will say, you, I'll, I'll give you what's happening. Okay. Today. We're shooting what a is pen cast? Well, well, I will say what's, what has very, very recently happened. Okay, okay. I went right. to lunch. You know, yeah. I, I go home for lunch, yeah, make sure. myself some leftovers or whatever. Sure. Okay. I uh, had a craving for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It happened. So I go in there. Get out the jelly, get out the peanut butter. And my wife's like, what are you doing? We've got leftovers. I bought you Cajun turkey at the grocery store and you're not having peanut butter and jelly. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I put them back. I'm like, all right, God, I guess I'm okay. having all right. I guess I'm having turkey sandwich. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. Peanut butter and jelly, that's gonna last forever. Turkey's yeah. not gonna last forever. Let right. me do the turkey sandwich. So mm -hmm. got some turkey, got some, mm -hmm. got some monster, got some lettuce, had that happen. Mm, but monster. as I'm making it, I'm yeah. like, Man, I still want my peanut butter and jelly. The craving's still there. <laughs> it's still there. I'm, I'm eating it. I'm like, it's still there. Mm. And I told her, I was like, I really have a craving for peanut butter and jelly. She's like, all right, well, have, a, have that for your dessert sandwich. And I said, <laughs> you know what? I think I will. Dessert sandwich. I don't think she was very serious when she said it, but you know what I did? I made myself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Said, all right, honey, I'm going back to work. See you later. Had my sandwich in my hand. Didn't have any sort of napkin or anything i just <laughs> took a sandwich into the car you're, you're committed i'm just eating full my, commitment I'm just eating my peanut butter and jelly sandwich gotta, going down the road to finish it to the coming end. back to work and it was pleasant yeah it was pleasant did it satiate that craving it did yeah it did i i just what kind of jelly do you use on that thing i was just grape jelly okay we we had an assortment but i went with i went with classic grape, classic grape. Okay. yeah but what kind of peanut butter crunchy smooth? uh we had smooth and i was thankful for it because while i like either um shannon when she buys bread she buys like the really like soft bread i oh. like wheat bread um so when i'm using wheat bread it's a lot more durable so sure. you know the it can handle it can handle the the chunks you know yo i know so, yeah that real soft bread it like you like tear it apart as you're going to yes it's I'm no stranger to the peanut butter and jelly right i'm like <laughs> so i was thankful today that we didn't have the crunchy because it, it'll just rip it right into pieces so yeah that's what's happening now that was my most recent venture okay dessert sandwich there you go nice I like um it. I like it. but uh last week right after the pen cast aired uh, my wife picks me up because we had to go pick up a car um, from being worked on. It just needed an oil change, but also it needed this latch replaced. So anyway, we're about to go get that. She picks me up a little bit early from work and she hands me this box. And she's like, hey, look, a uh, late Christmas present, or uh, birthday present, open it up now. And I said, Shannon, we got to go to the, they close at five. We got we to gotta get there. She's like, no, open it now, open it now. I was like, okay, okay. Okay. Open it up right there in the car while it's running. Lift out a Waffle House hoodie <laughs> and a Waffle House coffee mug <laughs> and it made me so happy wow. i turned off the car ran back inside the office i was like adrian i got a waffle house hoodie <laughs> and uh so that just wow that made me so happy because on my birthday or the day waffle before house, my birthday waffle house merch uh, I'm, I'm, wow. a, I'm a waffle house stan so on sunday which was the day before my birthday um we picked up archer from a sleepover and she's like hey where do you want to go out for breakfast we can go anywhere you want because it's your birthday week and i said well waffle house um and while i was there i was holding the mug i'm like man i wish i had one of these and apparently right then and there she bought me the mug but then realized that there was also a hoodie so she picked that up as well like right so is it like the same mug as what you get yes. served in the restaurant yes that's pretty cool yeah that's right cool. so I don't know, i'm super stoked about that wow um and then like i mentioned my mom and my stepdad came over on saturday to watch deadwood the movie they yeah they don't even have netflix so they just have like a couple like seasons of shows on on DVD that they just wow. watch and watch and watch and watch. My mom, I've seen Deadwood a lot. My mom has seen it far more than me. Wow. So what they did with this movie was the show had gotten canceled right at season three. And then 10 years go by and somehow they get the entire cast together and they make a movie. Like wow. kind of just, and it's literally like revisiting the town. You go back, it's been 10 years. Hmm some gray hair, some new facial hair, like yeah. the town's developed, you know, and 
it's just it's miraculous how they replicated the sets. Wow. Everything looks exactly the same. It's That's wild. Cool. That's cool. So they were they loved it. They were like, Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Oh, is that yeah. that person? Oh my god, they look so old. That's oh, so they cool. look good. Oh, they, she had some work done. But um <laughs> it was really cool. And wow. uh before that we went to Yenching uh, to get some Chinese food because you know how I feel about Yenching. Man, so Waffle House and Yenching and I peanut had butter it, and jelly. I had it my way this weekend. You man. are this makes up for a couple weekends ago when I yeah vomiting dogs and <laughs> Right, <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> oh man, so that was good. That was pleasant. <clears throat> and then, um, then the next day, uh, Archer and I wanted to start my new Lego Star Wars game, the Skywalker Saga. I was yeah. gonna. It was, it's a local co-op game, so we were gonna play that mm-hmm. together. Fun. But I told him, I'm like, dude, we can't be doing this until you clean your playroom. Yeah. you know, yeah, he has two rooms. Um, he's an only child, so he gets two rooms, and one of them is a playroom. So. Mm-hmm. He has two rooms he can make disgusting and dirty and yeah. hellish. So mm-hmm. uh, that thing needed help. So I told him I'd help him. We walked out of there with one trash bag full of stuff, and I felt like nothing had been done. Like, <laughs> oh, just, gosh. <laughs> I mean, it, things are off the floor at least, but man. Is that, this where he has that, like, gym thing that yeah, you in there? Yeah, okay, okay. yeah. Man, it was, so it was exhausting. So we got that mm. done. He was pretty cool about it overall. okay. okay. But he has so many like craft things that he brings home from his after school programs, like paper plates with things. Oh, this is this is my drum yeah. set. I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, it is, but yeah, it needs a home though. Dude, yeah, like where is it gonna go? Like, yeah, so we many... keep like bins, like plastic bins. Like we yeah. we have like one plastic bin for each kid. That's like the the art and craft things that we want to keep. We write like how old they were when they did it. Yeah. And it's like, gotta be like pretty special to yeah. be in there, you know? But all the other stuff, I'm like, they need to find a home for it if that, it's special to them. And if there's not a home. Yeah, that's what I told them. I'm like, yeah. I, you can keep whatever you want to keep, but it needs to be somewhere. Yeah. And that's not on the dinner table. Yeah. Like that's not where it lives. It's like, tough. But there's so. no room for it anywhere else. I'm like, I'm sorry. That... Yeah, this is a life skill that you need to learn. I was like, you, you realize <laughs> that if we kept all of the cardboard and paper things you brought home, what the house would look like, you right? You would look like hoarders. It would oh, make a TV show about you. Oh, man. It's crazy. So, yeah. Kids generate so much stuff. Oh, gosh, and it's all so precious until it's not. And then you need to get rid of it at some point. So many pipe cleaners. <laughs> So you talked about players. this. You talked. You talked oh about God. your arts and crafts budget at his school. Like, man. getting your money's worth on pipe cleaners. I really am. That's now sick. I'd mentioned that to him, and he's like, "Actually, I only use six pipe cleaners for my creations. Everybody else uses like 12. I was like, "Oh, well, I'm sorry. I stand corrected." Wow. I was like, yeah, I'm very intentional. Intentional <laughs> with my crafts. I was wow. like, All right, dude. Sorry. All right, well, rock on, man. Rock salute on. to you. Saving the planet. Um, and then, uh, yes, we did play Star Wars. We played a lot of Star Wars, made it through the first movie, Phantom Menace. Um, and, uh, you know, he's not paying attention to the story at all. He's like, who can I, who can I just, I'm just going to attack this random NPC. (laughs) Oh yeah. That's what I do when I play video games. He's just like, oh look, I can separate, you know, and just walk on, walk, walk with my legs while my torso is over there. And I was like, like, that didn't happen in the movie, Archer. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but no, it's all good. We had a lot of fun with that. And I actually started playing a, uh, you know, as far as retro gaming goes, I started playing Hook for the Super Nintendo, like based off the movie with oh, uh, yeah. Robin Williams. Yeah, I remember that. And um, the Rufio. game. Rufio. Rufio. Such a good movie. Such a good movie. It is pretty dated. The game, is, the game is okay. It's very slow. Like when you jump, it's like, jump. Oh, weird. You know, just, it's one of those really sluggish feeling games, not yeah. snappy and quick. Yeah. So it's like you want to do stuff before your character should do stuff. So it's taken some getting used to. The music's good though. Okay. Like there's that that theme where, you know, you've got the, you know, Smee's bringing the hook to Dustin Hoffman. It's like, dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. So that's playing in the game. Yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. It's got actual movie music in it. That's cool. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty, and the graphics yeah, look really good. You assume that a video game based off a movie like that, like they didn't create that game for that movie. They like, adopted some other yeah the, like, the, theming and the, just like slapped the... a lot of the times that's the case this yeah. one this one this one was pretty solid though was it yeah, yeah okay. absolutely all right um there were, like back then every movie got a game oh yeah like yeah it that was, was like part of we were heavily merchandised to as children oh, for sure heavily like yeah demolition man got a game lawnmower man got a game like that <laughs> the, the terrible <laughs> terrible sci-fi wow cg garbage fest got a video yeah, game yeah but anyway so I've been, i did a little bit of retro gaming and then i actually uh used a um employee appreciation day gift card turn nice. turn that into an ebay gift card and then bought 
uh, Batman Returns for Super Nintendo, which is a favorite of mine, but uh, my brother always had it and I just hadn't picked it up. So I added it to my collection. So wow. thank you for that. You're welcome. There we go. Also, Archer finally decided to learn how to ride a bike. Well, that's exciting. He's just been kind of ambivalent about it. Like, you know, how kind of how Joseph was. Like, just it is. Is, yeah. <laughs> so he was marginally interested, but he just usually goes on his scooter. Like, not really any, zero yeah. interest to take his training wheels off. Barely any interest to ride it with the training wheels on. But just recently, yeah. he's like, nope, I want to do it. And I was like, okay, well, do you want to try with the training wheels? Nope, just take them off. I want to figure it out. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, he's nine. Like, he, he, he should yeah. know at this point. Yeah. But sure enough, like, he got, he stumbled like twice but within 10 minutes he had it he, and he was going it. like yeah. it was not hard for him but i was like wow okay well you can ride a bike now like yeah was, he That's just awesome. started going but now he's super into it but granted he is like me in a lot of ways and he will be just obsessed with something for a few days and then yeah. just completely forget about it so <laughs> like and he wanted me to, he wanted me to take him to ride bikes after school yesterday so i'm like okay well you know dogs are okay for a little while we can do that for a bit yeah but um like i don't know if i should consider investing in a bigger bike because that you know that he's got that little ninja turtle bike that used to belong to joseph yeah yeah, um so it's pretty small like he could he could use a larger one um the tough thing about bikes especially when the kids are that young i'm like like, do i buy another one like i don't want him to grow up and be like oh yeah my parents wouldn't buy me a bike i had this you know little kid hand me down yeah but also, I'm like, well, if you have like a crappy bike, you're never gonna want to ride right. it. Right. So it's but like, I, yeah, I have no idea tough. how long he's gonna be interested in this. Yep. And I don't have a ton of room. I have the one mm-hmm. little shed area that's connected to the house, and I can barely fit that little bike in there. Yeah. So I don't know. I'd like for him to have one, but you know, they're they're like we found one at Target for like 175, and yeah, that, that's not nothing. I know. The tough thing is when you get to like, and even 175 is like not that expensive. No, I know. Like, I know. Like you're you're still not gonna get a bike with no problems at 175. Like I, I, all I want is like <laughs> just something that he's excited about and that can yeah. be his, and that yeah. I don't have to inflate the tires every single time we go out. I remember I have a memory from my childhood when I was 10. I used to love riding my bike, and I wanted to save up to get like a good like a mountain bike, like a mm. real bike. And I was a big I was a big kid too, so like I I outgrew the like little kid bikes pretty quick, and a lot of like my sisters i have an older sister her like hand-me-down bikes with like a banana seat and all that and yeah. was like didn't quite work for me but um i remember saving up and we went to walmart and i was so excited to get this bike and i'd like been working and i'd saved like 200 dollars or something for this bike. wow or maybe a hundred i think it was a hundred dollars it was a hundred dollars um I was so excited because it looked flashy and it had gears you could change and all that kind of stuff. And I was kind of like messing around with it. We were in the checkout line and my dad was in the chain, like fell off the bike. And my, oh. and my dad was just like, you know, he could tell how excited I was, but he was like, look, he's like, if you get this bike, it's not, it's not a great quality bike. You're going to have problems with it. And it's, it's going to, it's going to hinder your excitement. He's like, tell you what, he's like, if you save up, for the next, uh, like a real bike. And we went to like the local bike shop. He's like, if you save up, he's like, I'll help you towards it, but you're not gonna be able to get this one today. And I was heartbroken, but I put it Uh, off and I was like, and I saved up and I got the real bike. And I had that next bike for probably 12 or 13 years until I went to college and then I replaced it. So I had that bike for like a, over a decade. That's cool. So it is tough. He's he's still a little kid, like he's still a small, nine-year-old so yeah. i don't know if he's ready for like a full-size bike um yeah i would say i would say like but there's consider, like a, there's consider like a, getting like a not amazing next yeah, bike yeah but then you'll he'll probably reach a point where he'll outgrow like the kid bikes and if he's still interested in it yeah. then heck yeah no problem I, yeah. you know we can we can work out something but yeah i just don't know with him like it's it just tough. his faces are so short yeah this is and tough. i mean i get it i get yep. it yep. he comes by it on us for sure. For so sure. we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. But oh, um, cool. right now, he's super into it, and it's something that gets him out of the house, which he never wants to do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, you never know. It's like it's the same kind of thing. Like when I, you know, a decade ago or so, when I wanted to try to lose a bunch of weight, which I've since gained all of it back. But that's a whole other story. Um, I wanted to get like a real road bike. Mm-hmm. I was like, Rachel, I think like road biking can be something that can be good for my fitness. She was like, okay, well, and I she was fine she was supporting me either way but i knew it was an investment so i was like i'm gonna ride my old mountain bike from college and i'm gonna ride that like i would a road bike and it's gonna be 
kind of miserable to do that. But if I want to do that bad enough for mm -hmm. like three or four weeks and I do it every day, then I'm like committed to the process. And then I'll know that it's not just, I want a new bike. I've done stuff like that before to justify to a purpose purchase. Yeah. So maybe give it time, see if he sticks with it with yeah. the, the smaller, whatever kid bike. Mm -hmm. And if you see that he kind of sticks with it and the fire is really there, then invest in the, in the yeah. bigger bike. But it's always a crapshoot with kids. Yeah. And it's weird too, because Shannon and I were, were Shannon and I were talking about how when we were kids, a bike meant additional freedom. Oh yeah. Like bike was everything. It, it meant when you got a bike, you could go to more places, mm -hmm. visit friends, yeah. or you know, access different areas it was of like your, your domain you were like right you know um, free to roam and i didn't i didn't i grew up in a subdivision we were pretty out and it's not not rural but not you know we couldn't bike on the roads right um but still you know we could go to places that we could and mm -hmm. uh but it just doesn't mean that anymore because yeah. kids just don't get to go around biking places any longer so um it's less meaningful hmm. to kids now than it was to us for sure yeah it is definitely different yeah, yeah. but anyway that's what's happening with me. All right. Well, with me, we have been laying pretty low. Ellie's been sick ever since like yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah, I remember. She's better now, but you know, COVID tested, strep tested, none of that. I don't Ugh, know what it was, but she like lost her voice and everything. Oh she, man. Low grade fever off and on. But well, she was a trooper. She basically just like quarantined herself in her room. Didn't really see her very much for oh. four days, <laughs> but what is she she's doing okay. There? She like just on playing we on a tablet. We took off her like iPad limits and stuff, yeah. and she did some crafts and stuff there like you that. Go. But she was just kind of out of it, so she just you know binge watch you know craft videos and stuff like that. Bluey, she loves Bluey, and just like you know show Sonic shows and stuff like that. Nice. Um, and then Joseph had a birthday party for one of his friends over the weekend. So that was kind of fun. I was like pretty tired because I was it at really a house or week. at a. Uh, it was at a house. Yeah, yeah. it's his good friend that I you know drive the two of them to school most mornings. So that was fine, but I had one of those like wonderful experiences as a business owner that you like never really quite get the time off. So while I'm at the party, I got a call from our alarm system company. That's right, because I got our, the call too, and I you know, texted you. Well, I missed the call because I was at a birthday party. So and did was, I. You know, and um, you know, so every now and then we'll have like one of our motion sensors that'll like send a weird signal or it's like you know low battery or whatever it is, and they'll call us. You know, and then just to be safe, they'll send police out just to make sure. So that happened. The message said, we've dispatched authorities. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah. Yeah. And it's okay. You know, it happens. It happens. But, still. Right, but don't we have to like pay extra when the authorities come yeah, out? Yeah, we get fined. Ah. Progressively higher every time there's a false alarm, which ah. makes sense. You don't want to waste the police's time. But, yeah. You know, it's just one of those situations. But if we like, like what, what would you have done if you had picked up? Like they still would have gone out, right? Well, no, I have, I have, we have security cameras in the building. Oh, you can, can check on your I app? I can access them. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, but I missed the call. So they sent it out anyway. So we were dealing with that and I was trying to like troubleshoot that. And then, um, I don't know, whatever, because of the fault that had been, this is a lot of detail, but then our cleaning crew that comes in on the weekend, they had trouble setting the alarm. And so they had texted me and all this kind of stuff. So I'm like trying to remote troubleshoot uh. all these alarm things. And then... <laughs> wake up on monday morning oh yeah oh my god i wake up on monday morning so i already have to come in and like troubleshoot this alarm stuff and there's some other it related thing that we had to deal with as well so i've got our it guy in here and then um you know adam who gets here earlier in the morning says hey um the entire production room where we make all our ink samples and all that stuff is completely flooded with water he was like it was actively sprouting a leak from underneath the sink so we have this like system that we recently installed for water filtration that we use for like pen flush and this other stuff. Well, something broke that was recently installed and basically like at some point between, I guess, you know, whatever, midday Sunday when the cleaning crew was here and Monday morning when Adam arrived, God. that thing leaked and it was just spraying water out into the room. And it was, I mean, it probably covered 2,000 square feet or so. It was all in the production like an room and water. then a little bit out into the carpet, a yeah. little bit out into the warehouse. Thankfully, it was not where there any product stored. No. Ultimately, like, we we did, it didn't touch any products. Yeah. It, to, it touched some, it touched some, some like, storage. Some like boxes, like cardboard boxes that yeah. had like the ink sample vials we use and like stuff like right. that in there, but it's all bagged up. So it didn't actually ruin anything, right. but it did soak into a lot of our carpet yeah. that's like in our photo studio and in, in a part of our hallway. So we had to like come in and like suck it up with shop vacs and you know, the, the carpet cleaning vacuums and all that kind of stuff. And I brought fans in and we like, you know, so like- Did you bring all those in? Yeah. Cause, Cause I, I remember them from the old space. Like yeah, we've had them in mine. the building before. Yeah, they're my fans. Oh, okay. So they, they yeah. weren't already here though? 
No, we've had them here sometimes. Right. You know? I remember the fans. Yeah, but I'm like, where yeah. did these come from? Like, I know that I've seen them in here before, but I haven't seen them in storage anywhere. Well, it's because like I so I did store them for a while because we've had leaks before. Yeah. So sometimes I'll bring them in, but then you like you don't okay. need it for years. Right. Yeah. And then you're like, I haven't go seen them to, for years. Yeah. You go like we to used to the storage. We and, used to cool ourselves with those fans back yeah, when but, we had the old warehouse and yeah. it wasn't air conditioned. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like, so I, I know that in. fan. So that's what happened is I woke up and I was like, you know, going to start my Monday morning, a oh. nice fresh week. And it was like, oh, there's water leaking in the building. Okay, oh my gosh. Okay. So I still have to drive and Ellie's sick. So we can't just like leave her home. So Rachel's got to stay home with Ellie. I've got to drive Joseph and his friend in. Jeez. So I'm like loading shop vacs and fans into the car, packing them in, pick up the boys, drop them off at school in the opposite direction, driving to work, going and dealing with all that stuff. So I had all that. And then I had other stuff planned. We had video shoots that we were trying to do yeah. we had other like video calls and stuff that were scheduled that i couldn't move so it was a very exciting I, day. <laughs> to the point where i like i had shot my videos and then i come in to talk to brian oh before he shot, shoots his videos and be like hey man you okay i know you've got a lot going on <laughs> he had already shot a video he was just smiling was like, like on a roll he was like yeah what's up man i'm like ah, how are you not just comp I, don't, I don't know man. i'm like i need a nap just listening to that it's this weird it's this weird it's that weird thing that's like you know you're kind of made right for the role like when things go crazy and there's just chaos like that i i get cool as a cucumber and i'm like okay you know it helps me focus and i'm like okay there's a lot of weird stuff going on but let me check out here and everybody you know i wasn't like the one sucking up all the stuff out of the thing but i was like checking in on everybody and it was all coordinated we were yeah. talking and it's like things I've, were just flowing. I've never seen you stressed out in those situations i've seen you more stressed it out down, yeah i've seen you more it stressed comes out later. it when... comes later <laughs> I've seen you more stressed out when we're like confused about whether or not a product is like has this feature. Like, is it a, is it a piston or a converter? And we've got mixed communication. Like that frustrates you more it than does, like yeah. a flood in the building. Like, yeah, it's weird. I, like it, it's weird. Yeah, I don't know, but it just kind of makes sense. And you know, we've sorted it out. Thankfully, no permanent damage to the building. No products got ruined. That's awesome. And everybody was super good. Didn't even like didn't delay us shipping out any orders or anything. Oh, no, no. So it was uh the team really stepped up and it was, well, it was great. Yeah, and Adam he was here early and he, you know, really got down Adam to was business. Great. He really, he really saved. He had the, the shop vacs, yeah. he started sucking things up, communicated it properly, Absolutely. you know. So that was yeah. it was good that he it was, it was good teamwork all around. Like yeah. Sam had to run back home and get his uh you know, the the vacuum that like was dogs mess on the carpet and stuff like that. Cause that oh, like like yeah. one of those like water extraction carpet cleaner type oh, vacuums. Yeah. Yeah. I have a little one. I have a little one called a, the Green Machine. Yeah, I've that, got one of those too. But I was yeah. like, that thing is gonna be no, a, yeah, a fart in the wind yeah. on this project. But he had a <laughs> he had one that was more like an upright vacuum. Nice. He says he sucked up like six or eight gallons of water out of the carpet Dang. after we'd already done it with a shop vac. All right, Sam. So yeah, so he helped. You know, so everybody everybody rallied and pulled through, and it was just great. It was great to see. So as chaotic as stuff like that is, it is actually pretty cool to see how everybody comes together. So that was nice and fun and exciting. Oh. Uh, um, Good way but, to start your Monday. Yes, indeed. Um, and then, you know, the weather's getting a little nicer. The it pollen is. is starting to form it is. everywhere. Um, so that's fine. I have a black and, car. Oh, you have a black car too. So I have yeah, a black car. You know, with black interior. Yeah, I'm like, oh, the weather's beautiful, but like, I can't leave my windows down. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna end up with yellow film all over everything inside the car. So yeah, that's fun, and we're definitely feeling. And Rachel's not gonna be able things. to breathe. Yeah, she's had some headaches and yeah. had some other things, but you know, it's all good. Um, but you know, did a little yard work, spreading some grass seed, you know, getting into the, the grass starting to grow again. I'm like, here it goes. Yeah. Time to do this for the next nine months. Yeah. But that's all right. When I, when I, I know it's time to cut the grass when I, I can no longer see the corgis. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I guess it's time. I would say you might be past the point when you need to cut the grass then. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, they're pretty low to the ground. Maybe. But still, yeah. Yeah. They, what are they like foot off the ground? I mean, that's some pretty long grass. Probably. Oh no, I'm joking. I can I can totally see them, but <laughs> you know the thing. Is, yeah, when they when they come in and like their whole bellies are totally wet from wet grass. Oh, I'm like, yeah. all right, you're yeah. not getting. There's zero clearance there. So right. <laughs> right. All right. Yep, that happens. Um, and then to follow up on something that I I like to I like to do projects like. 80, 90% of the way, and then leave them for a long time, and then finally come back and finish them randomly. Uh, that's how I do home projects. So you remember I had that fan in my bathroom where I bought the switch? Yeah, the like demon the, fan. The moisture sensing yeah. fan that, yeah. Had yeah, we its, remember had that. Your kids were afraid own. of it. Yep. Well, the kids are over it now, and they love it, and I never have to think about the kids showering or anything. The fan just does its thing. But the one that we installed in our bathroom just turns on for no reason 
off and on all night, disrupting our sleep. So I ditched that thing, but I bought a new one that's just a fan timer. And it's cool. You like push the button and it has a timer at like 5, 10, 15, 30, an oh. hour. Oh, nice. So you can set like a designated time and just push the button. That's cool. And it runs for that time. Are you good at at turning on your fan after you shower? I keep it on during, while I shower. During, okay. You during should, and you after. should do that too. So yeah. that's why I like to have a timer See? because I can have like 30 minutes or whatever. I just hit that while I shower. It's setting up and then just, yeah. it's, it's got, that's why I wanted to do it. Or like, you know. Stink happens. Yeah. And you do it. And, you know, it's like upstairs in I our should, I bathroom. Should, I've gotten better at that. I used to be terrible about that. Okay. Um, but yeah, you got to stay on top of that stuff. I know. Because like moisture building up in the bathroom is not great. Yeah. I'm, I'm a lot better about it. But yeah. a timer would be <clears throat> super helpful. helpful. So it was in, Luckily, it was I have extra ventilation because when I installed my fan, it was smaller than the one that was there. So I have a nice hole in my drywall that goes oh, up into the that's attic. that's great. That's yeah. what you want. So it's extra ventilation. Wow. So you're you're moisturizing your attic space by doing that, which it's is dis- always a good idea. Dispersing. Um, sure. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I need to patch that. But it's it's like it's 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 too big for like a small little like just, you know, mesh drywall patch. Yeah. But also really not big enough for like a solid chunk of drywall yeah and i just so i don't I, I also i don't want to do it um <laughs> no one ever wants to patch drywall oh my god if it was like a, 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 a you know a, a hole like i could that would be easy i could do that but it's like a thin narrow strip yeah so i'd have to cut more out mm. and then but, uh, I'm sorry. You keep talking. I'm getting. I'm so. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, right. I'm upsetting right. myself. Yep. I, I, I hate it. I, get I hate it. it. I hate it. Um, I see it every day, and yeah. I hate it. So anyway, I've had this <sighs> new fan switch on my bathroom countertop for six months. Yes, that's sitting. That's there. me and my GFCI outlet. Yep. It's, it's not even hard. It's no. Not, all I had to do was go downstairs, yes. turn off the circuit, replace the thing. It took me five minutes, and I did it. But it's you know, it took me six months plus five minutes. Yeah. So I finally did it, and now it's great. That's and awesome. We're enjoying that. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, obviously, I've been talking more about AI stuff. There's so much AI stuff in the news right now. Oh so yeah. I'm spending a considerable amount of time just just trying to keep up with like what's coming out. It's pretty intense. If y'all haven't uh, researched any of it, there's a lot. It's changing things. I'm getting emails every day, like, "Hey, guess what? We're incorporating AI into our search function. Hey, yeah, there's, there's a new like AI a, tool that we have. Like, there's like an AI arms race happening yeah. right now. But mm-hmm. I mean, we're not like, oh, this is going to be everything we're going to do now. But like, there, are, it's, it's going to change productivity tools. It's going to change a lot of things, and we're just trying to keep up. We're just trying to be aware of what's going on. So yeah, I'm just personally just interested to know what's up. So spending a lot of time on that. But anyway, that's all I got. All right, that's what's happening. Cool. All right, got a couple of company updates and then we can wreck this sucker up. All right, we got a couple of videos. I'm pretty sure last time we mentioned the Homo sapiens mm-hmm. uh, refresh video, we did get that out. So that would aid. Yay for that. And then we have the Lamy Safari D lights video that we also got out. Um, we are going to be taking off next week from the pencast because it's spring break for our kids and we're going to do some kid things. Yeah, I'm going on vacation. Ooh, fun. Just, we'll be doing some we'll be doing family stuff, yeah. you know, but uh should be pretty good. So, we're going to be taking off for the pencast, but we're still going to publish another video. Yeah, I'll be I'll yeah. be I'm not taking the whole week off. I'll be back so I'll put up a video yeah. Friday probably. Yeah. And then uh yeah, we'll have some other videos in the works, but you know, well this little little disruption here but then you know we'll be back in the swing of things so that's pretty much what we got going on other than leaky buildings and you know that kind of stuff <laughs> i already talked about the other updates but all right time to wrap it up well we want to thank everybody for watching please leave us some feedback let us know how we're doing ask us some questions so that we can continue to have this show um definitely go check out goulaypens.com for all of your fountain pen ink and paper needs because we sell things and that's how we fund all of this uh subscribe to our youtube instagram tiktok all these places that we post things and i got a random fun factory for you about grass is it ai generated or is it coming from your brain it may have been prompted uh-huh. yeah, it may have been prompted all right lay it on me but uh, your robot yep um okay so the fresh cut grass smell that many people find pleasant is actually the result of grass releasing volatile organic compounds, VOCs, when it is damaged or hurt, such as during mowing or grazing. So it's like 
the smell of death. Pretty much. Like grass murder. It's like, a, it's like an alarm signal, yeah. These VOCs, which include compounds like hexanol cis 3 hexanol and cis 3 hexanol, of course, uh, are part of the grass's defense mechanism to signal distress and deter herbivores. So like things that are grazing on grass, like it's not just lawnmowers, but you know, animals that are eating the grass, um, as well as it attracts predators of the herbivores, such as parasitic wasps or predatory insects. So that's fun. So the grass is like, hey, someone come kill this thing that's eating me. Yeah, the grass is like, I'm in trouble. I'm gonna attract predatory Do you like, think insects. the grass is summoning yellow jackets to you? I don't know. <gasps> they are predatory wasps for sure. It's all the grass's fault. The grass is vengeance. Yeah, you're fighting nature. So when you smell freshly cut grass, you're essentially smelling the grass's response to injury. What? Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. And the grass is trying to enact righteous vengeance upon you. It's a war. For damaging it. It's a war on grass. <gasps> now, to be fair, many of the times that I've been stung by yellow jackets have been in the woods where there is no grass. Mm. So yellow jackets are basically just the devil incarnate they just, they anyway. Just hate you. Yeah. They they're just awful for everybody. Horse flies are like that too, right? They just bite you for oh, no horse reason. Horse flies are terrible. Yeah. Shannon got bit by a horse fly when we were out with uh, Archer doing yeah, bike things. They're miserable too. Just she was holding her phone just like, yeah! yeah. And she saw the fly. She's like, why isn't it leaving me? And all of a sudden it's just bitter. Like just yeah. just being mean. They're punks. Just being mean. Straight yep. up jerks. Yep. I remember swimming, you'd see like oh, yeah. horse pool? flies a lot. Oh, why, yeah. why was that the case? I don't know. And everybody would be like, horse fly! And everybody would go underwater. <laughs> That's right. Yep. I don't know. They're punks. Does that still happen? Sure. I don't swim anymore, really. If you go but... up further north, like up near Canada, they yeah. have these black flies that are just awful. Like, I would take heart insects over them any day. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Folks, that's... yeah, nature's rough, man. Yeah, well. I'll tell you. That's all right. Yeah. Stay inside. All right, that's all we got for y'all this week. Thanks so much for watching and right on.